of the United States of America, States of America and, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, good morning, everybody. <coughs> Welcome to the work session, January 5th, 2023, 9.30 a.m. I'll ask the Secretary Treasurer to call the roll. William Parrish. Present. Ann Walker. Here. Edward J. Warner, Jr. Present. Secretary Treasurer William Sell is present. President Scott Harwood. I am present. We're all here. All right. You Thank may you. continue. Thank you very much. All right, so we have some discussions on. We'll jump right in. Trustee Welker, you have a discussion I see listed for Meekox crabbing. I do. Um, just going back to There should be, everybody should have a letter from uh, Bay Constable Franks. Uh, Thanks, Lisa. your work session. That's great. Thanks for printing that out. Okay. So, as it's probably like the third or fourth um, single sheet back in your packet, um, Bay Constable, I mean, um, Marine Patrol Officer Franks had a suggestion. Um, in lieu of, or perhaps in addition to, um, our proposed jump ups um, with the crabbing poaching that's been going on in previous years. And what he was proposing was that there be a no crabbing restriction from midnight until 5 a.m. And with that, the thought was that if anyone sees any crabbing happening during that time, it doesn't have to be Marine Patrol, it, it could be code enforcement, or it could be the police department as well. And we would have a broader um, umbrella with which to go after. Um, because this has been a serious problem in previous years, and we're just trying to get out in front of it and look for some alternatives. So that's something that I'd like to hear the feedback from all of you on. And then I also wanted to just relay what East Hampton is looking at because they've had similar pro problems in Georgica and in other areas. So do you want to weigh in on the well, restrictions? Yeah, let's keep going. So East Hampton, um, the trustees have proposed this and it's going to go before the town board. and. What they're, um, what they're putting forth is that the charge will be upgraded to a misdemeanor, a misdemeanor, if there are no permits in possession. And also, if there are over limits with either no permit or shell fishing at night with no permits, it'll be an aggravated misdemeanor. The verbiage from their town attorney is coming to us um, and it is going to be an ongoing discussion with East Hampton but East Hampton's going after this very ag aggressively and I just want us to do the same thing I discussed with East Hampton they did a sting operation last year and that was quite productive so I'm hopeful that we'll be able to do that this year in addition to going after the permitting aspect of it as well so Mark what do you think of that uh on the legal side, on the uh, you know, I see a couple of problems. One with involving the police, and another with criminalizing the action. But I'd, I'd like to talk to the uh, East Hampton town attorney, maybe bounce a few things off, and, and see where we can go. Code enforcement could work, and definitely a code amendment. But uh, enforcing it in uh, justice court with a criminal violation may be problematic. Um, but I'll look into all aspects of it and, and let you know. What about the restriction from midnight, midnight to 5 a.m. with no, uh, that, no crabbing? That's discretion I believe you have. We, we, we should amend Section 12 of the code to reflect that first. Yeah, that would be the first course of action. And possibly, if you wish, a public hearing before that because it's going to be a code amendment. I think that would be uh, productive. Yeah. and. Uh, Secondly, I'd like you to look into the uh, New York State DEC regulations as far as uh, blue crabs, harvest limits, sizes, eggers, and uh, what, what their enforcement uh, capabilities are, being that we're going to do this on a town, uh, our town end. I don't think the state would get involved as far as the time parameters, but the other stuff that I mentioned, they would definitely be involved. And once it's uh, put in a car and it goes across the road, then it becomes a different type of a violation, you know. 
So uh, looking at what the East Hampton's doing and incorporating what we're going to do and looking at the state, it might be the three entities kind of like commingling the regulations, but I would definitely start with the uh, time limits of enforcement. Being that they're in yeah, so meant to be wide. Uh, I, I don't think you can do it in uh, the rest of the town because they would be considered migratory in uh, Mecox, not in Mecox, but in SAG, yeah. in uh, Mecox, it's in, in, other creeks. in the other creeks, they'd be migratory, so that would fall specifically under the DEC regulation. That's what's going to happen, the DEC they're going to go to, they're going to, go to Mecox then at 11, 30, 12. You're going to go to the other, hit the other Yeah, creeks. but the other ones, there's no regulations under the state statutes as far yeah. as time limits, as far as harvesting uh, crustaceans like that. Uh, maybe that's a conversation we should have with yeah, the state on state. a bigger, you know, if it's going to be a recreational, if it's going to yeah. be a recreational uh, enforcement versus a commercial enforcement, because uh, they, they view different, those two aspects differently. I did have a conversation with one of the state officers when I was down on scene. Um, with the whale situation last week, and we were kind of <clears throat> we touched on this, and it, it seems to be going on obviously at various different places on the island that this this pressure on you know you know illegally harvesting these crabs um, and taking over the limit and too small it's 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 a big problem that's uh, not just you know obviously limited to our neck of the woods here so they they're dealing with it uh, at various different places. Um, well, but, but at Meacox at Flying Point, if you put parking restrictions, that's happened. And, you know, they uh, already did. They that. They already did that, yep. so that would preclude people from parking there and camping out. Uh, but I also understand that they drop five or six people off in a van with buckets, and they let them go out harvest. They call up the, the van to come back, and then you know, then, then they take the van off site. Right. So harvesting, uh, setting a harvest date uh, time limit would be. On top of the parking would be the I think our best course of action. Yeah, and I think that midnight. To, I think going up to midnight because I mean obviously everybody has fond memories of going crabbing with their families back in the day yeah. as young children. But you figure by midnight, you know that should be you, you should be pretty much. You what know. did your mother used to say? Nothing good happens after yeah. midnight. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think I think that's enough time for a family to go down there and have a have a good time and so and, to and, put and holding a public hearing where you'd also get the. Uh, you know, the residents, the, the, residents, the rec recreational and commercial, uh, both uh, parties here to discuss, you know, their thoughts on it too. Because I know commercially, you might be, I mean, not that I, I'm a commercial crabber at night, but there might be someone that does it, and it might, you know, you know, during the hearing process be brought out whether they're in favor of it or not. So we might just do it as a recreational. You know, closure, but you know that would be come through the public hearing process. So let's let's. Uh, we plan on scheduling so, a public hearing. So at the no, next let's. What's? Yeah, I want to do that. Yeah, you got to do this at the next possible so, legal so juncture. Our next meeting yeah, is. We'll, have, we'll notice that we are going to have a public hearing on the following. Meeting. So right. we'll notice it June twenty sixth or right. whatever yeah. our next meeting is, and then, and then we'll have the public hearing the on July nineteenth or yeah. whenever that next right. meeting is. Upon how that so goes, does we adopt. does that still? Um, if we we can't would we because what we, i'm looking we, at is august right well, we could adopt is, if it goes our, well yeah we, we could, could adopt, adopt after the public day. hearing if the public hearing because goes well right you have the resolution ready for adoption correct. and then if if it goes well and right. we see it favorable to adopt it, then we could do it if at that at that juncture because valid objection yeah. then we could put that on hold yeah. but if it's if it's everyone's like hey let's protect the resource then yeah. Okay. You can, you can so that. a resolution to be approved after the public hearing on that July meeting, and um, the the height of the crabbing season is full moon in July and August, or predominantly it, is it full and new moon in August? It, it, it's it's usually in August is when they oh. they shed they they shed on the full moons in July, and they usually become harvestable right after that mm -hmm. so that that would be the uh, time frame so okay. if we could get it done before the middle end of July um, and have uh, have the bit and we should have the bay constables either take part of the public hearing or send a representative from the town enforcement end of it to hear their side of it too okay right right mark um, yeah I think that they uh, could could they we, do something written who, who would you yeah. like to be present from the town 
uh, somebody that would be, uh, you know, representing the bay constables, whether it's uh, Super, ha supervisory or yeah, yeah. I, could be I don't supervisory know, could be what, a captain what, or what, I don't know what the procedure no. is now, but I'd, I'd just recommend reaching out to the town liaison. Um, to yeah. speak with them first. Yeah, because I don't want to adopt Attempting the, to summon the uh, big or, or, I, I Yeah, or we, you could we, get we, the details, Mark, in terms of, uh, you, could, you seem to have a, a pretty strong yeah. opinion on, you know, so why don't you yeah. why don't you do that legwork? Yeah. And, and this is a recommendation that was brought by by one of the Bay constables, so sure. they probably already had internal conversations. Correct. So, so if you could bring that to the <coughs> forefront, Mark, I think that yeah. would be okay. helpful. Is it... Pretty much and, uh, good for the discussion here. I think so, at least as far as the the time restrictions, and then I will follow up with what East Hampton that's fine. is yeah. doing the and, and just keep and us fines. keep, yeah. Mark, yeah, keep us and Mark obviously since he's going to spearhead this. Because so. yep. that's a whole nother layer that involves town board, so that'll take a little longer. But um, I'm glad that we're working towards this. Okay, so thank you, thank you everyone. Okay. So you have another discussion on here. I do. MOA for the uh, Porta Potty at Peter's Pond and yep. Saga Pond. As you remember, um, the Saga Pond, so in our packet, there's a printed version of the um, MOA that um, Special Counsel um, Lombardo has drawn up. As you remember, the Saga Ponic Village mayor approached us um, asking for a porta potty to be installed uh, at the Peters Pond Lane site, um, and they followed up um, after we had had a, um, a preliminary discussion and said um, we'd like to put it in. And I just thought that we needed a bit more um, sort of uh, guidance around this. So. Um, in looking this over, I'd circulated it to the board, um, I, I believe at least once or twice on a um, couple previous occasions, but I wanted to address a couple things before we submit it to Sagaponic Village for their consideration. So if you look yeah, um, at number one um, in the draft agreement, uh, you'll see at the end portion of the uh, first sentence, there's a incorporated village of Sagaponic for an annual rent of one dollar per year that wasn't something we discussed so if you yeah, could just have consideration to have a contract so one dollar is a symbolic mm -hmm. gesture of money change of hands to make an enforceable contract is that is customary would you yep. agree council uh yeah that's fine we may wish to call it a license fee um, but but yes that, that's totally fine so do we strike, do we leave the term in rent or do we strike it and put license fee? I think license Does it get more complicated, Lisa, if we do license fee? There's no, no? not okay. much practical difference. It just, we want to make it look a, a bit more like a license and also just include language on uh, when it's revocable. Okay, yes, that, that's a really important part of this. Okay, if you move on to number two. Um, my impression had been that there was going to be landscape plantings um, in addition to um, a fence, but at this point they're just proposing a fence. It will be on three sides. It will um, be fairly... And just so you guys know, I believe that the back page has been left out. Right. Um, so Joe has it. There's a page so, two that didn't make it as well. Oh, okay. oh. It didn't make it on mine. So, didn't make it on mine either. So, so, does it describe the length of time the uh, one, one, one year in? So, Lisa, can you see if you can find it? Yes, yep. every year has to be renewed. So okay. that if, if there are issues or something, both parties can pull away from you. Okay. Bill has it. Paragraph 8. Bill has it. I'll, I'll print them out. Good. Have That's what you wanted, Eddie. Yeah. So that's what I put in. Uh, okay. Okay. So, what, because I'm concerned about that because they're proposal was for it just to be open-ended that it would go in and it would stay in forever and i think that we need some definite um yeah. discussion at sure. the end of each season um make to sure see how things go to, yeah. and go. to make sure that they're upholding their portion of things garbage had been a concern I did what asked. Yeah. 
It's a pilot porta potty project. It's a pilot project. I said, I, I guess you don't have page two on yours, Anne? I don't. On the printout? No. Yeah. I, I have set it, it up my as, email. as a five-year agreement that had to be renewed group. every year, basically. Right. So that if there were issues, we could either discuss, renegotiate, or terminate. Right. Yeah, that's good. It reads, this agreement shall be for a period of one year from the date of this agreement's execution and renewable at the party's consent for an additional one-year period for an additional four years. That consent shall be considered granted upon the passage of a resolution by the trustees for that express purpose. That's fine. So we have to take an affirmative action yeah. every year to renew it. That's good. So that's good. It doesn't <coughs> automatically roll. Right. Because I just, and then the thing that is yeah, in want, there, there was another. It? Sure. Um, the thing that was in there that um, I was concerned about was that the village has signage on it that says, Call the village if there's any complaints, concerns, etc., and also that they have a weekly maintenance agreement with for it to be empties and paint. Um, yeah, so that's all in here. So I think those were the main things, but I just want to make sure that there was nothing else that. I wonder if weekly's um, going to be enough. That, How's that going to well, be I had, I had it as a minimum of once a week. So a minimum of once a week. That yeah. Make that we know that they're going to maintain it every week. And that's how I set it up. So, what do you suggest? We Include, could we put in including? So, it, it, it reads now the village agrees that it's solely responsible for all costs associated with the public toilet, including but not limited to costs to obtain, install, rent, and maintain the public toilet. And then the second is it agrees to have the facility serviced by the owner of the public toilet no less than once a week. So where would we insert monitoring? I'm pretty sure if it, if it gets filled, they're going to have to get more than once a week. Yeah. yeah. But, but who, like, they're gonna, checks on that? Well, they're, they're they have a schedule. They have a schedule. But if it needs to be done more? Probably the, uh, they probably have village crews. Maybe to get a complaint on a phone number that's going to be on the yeah, side. Yeah, and of I it. think I put a requirement for signage with a telephone number right. for you complaints did. Know, to the village. I yep. know Long yep. Beach is once a week. I, yeah. and, so, and it's, it's good? Yeah, once a week. They are there. Well, well, let, and if it's more, they'll figure it out yeah. as, as exactly. the program moves yeah. along. Because they don't want to mess because then they, they'll, they'll lose the they're going to lose, lose the business. Yeah, lose the opportunity. Oh, we're going to get all kinds of phone calls. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, we get all the kinds of phone calls now. We do anyway. Yeah. <laughs> We're trying to make the program successful. Right. Yeah. And that's why going through all these steps, I think, will be helpful. Um, <sighs> collaboration on the most basic human needs here. Yeah. Uh, I didn't put that type of language, but I can if you want something. Yeah, if they don't, yeah if I can add it. Maintaining it, we can revoke it at any time. I think that might be an important part of things because otherwise it goes it. through the end of the year. So I think that's yeah okay. to be added. I'll add and it then, on. And then um, if it could be reviewed before it's submitted to the village, uh, that would be good. Okay. Does anybody else have any concerns or thoughts no. about I this? Think that covers okay. I think, I think we have. discussed. Okay. I sent it to everybody. All right, so we're just adding that. Thanks, Bill. You can respect that. Do you want that one back? Or? Yeah. Let me have the original. Because right, I made, Do you I made notes. Did you make notes? I made notes for myself. I made notes for myself. Okay. All right, so that concludes the MOA discussion. Yes. Port a potty for Peter's potty. Okay, so thank, thank you. Thank you. So, when do we anticipate the draft going to the village? Uh, Tomorrow. No, no, to me first. Yeah, sure. And, and then, and then yeah. to the village. Okay. Thanks, sir. Okay. All right, let's go right into the general permit applications for determination. Uh, if Susan Baker, 26 Benita, and I see DKR Shores is here, I would assume representing that. Ready for your presentation, Agena? Not really. Not really. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Huh? I'm exhausted. You're exhausted. It's a long weekend. You gotta bring your A game here. <laughs> long weekend. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's the first weekend. All right. Um, Sign in and state your name. Gina Rickton, DKR Shores, here to represent Susan Baker. Um, it is 
26 Bonita Road, East Clock. This is in the Shinnecock Shores development. <coughs> um, it's a pretty typical standard bulkhead reconstruction. Um, the bulkhead to the north is about 12 inches higher, so she's asking for a height uh, raise to match that bulkhead. Right, which is pretty much <coughs> it's standard. Um, also, we included uh, rock with beach grass, a buffer, and the existing um, bulkhead not only has a lot of sinkholes and very dangerous right now, but there is concrete um, slabs with boat davits that will be removed. So all in all, uh, the project will be an improvement to the site. There's also a uh, step down uh, we're proposing to close off. So is there lawn right up to the bulkhead at this point? Well, it, it's it, you could say it's lawn, but it's there's sinkholes going up to the bulkhead. <laughs> that was right, lawn. but there's no buffer there now. Correct. Okay. Um, and how long is the linear footage of the bulkhead? Seventy-five. All the lots in there are seventy-five okay. wide, so Thank they're you. all standard. So it's a, it's a good improvement to the site. Are you guys okay? You all right? Going on over there. Something fell. Yeah. I hope it's just something that fell. So a substantial improvement to the site. Yes. Any other questions? No, it's I think standard. I still owe you owe you plans that are stamped on this one. Yeah, well, if it, if it goes so uh, Yes, we need stamp plans. So right. Okay. That yeah. Okay. So you, It'll be on So I'll get on that. I'll at right. least I'll send the cat yeah, file out. It has to go through that step before it could go anywhere. Okay. You want to do the poser thing while she's here? Yes. Do you want to do the other one? Okay. 132 Point Road, West Hampton Beach. It's a proposed uh, dock. It's a small dock. Um, it's very similar to the dock to the east, um, but also within Blue Book regulations. Um, as far as distance to the property line, extended property line. James, meeting all public regulations? Is it appears so, you know, they're 20 feet off the property line and they're uh, two and a half feet of water, so. There's only there's a question about the... Oh, the pilings, yeah. You have nine inch butt tiles. I think the blue book only requires... Eight. Eight. Mm -hmm. eight. Okay, I mean, I can, I can change that. But generally what happens is these piles are not um, milled not, not exactly perfect. at eight, so they do vary. So sometimes one side is because the tree <coughs> like that. Sometimes the tree is a little wider than eight by the time they're milled down. Okay. So I always kind of include that um, because I can't control the consistency of them milling these lumber. Um, they don't mill them, they just cut them down and strip the bark. Yeah. Right, so I, it's, it's, I think that's... They're going to end up being eight, but I like to include it because there's just a hair right. difference sometimes. I, I think in this area previously we have um, requested that the floating dock come out because of icing. Seasonal uh, yes. floating yeah. dock. And it will floating. be seasonal there. There's a lot of ice jacking right. uh, is, in that area, be, so the ramp and the float is will that, come out. Is that, in, is that in the permit now? Is that in the application um, now? No, no we need okay. an app, uh, cover sheet. The, okay. the I can yeah. do this. So it'll it'll get ruined. Ruined. Actually, actually, it is. It says seasonal, oh, actually, seasonal on right. the plan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but we so want it on the... On the. But I could put it on the... As the character of work or a special condition, so that way... It's in the description. It is? Yeah. Yeah. Get it all to match. Just get everything to match so it's Stored clear. Oh, it actually does say ramp and float to be stored seasonally in an upland location. On the plants. It's actually okay. in the yeah. description. Okay. She's good. Okay. But yes, good point. Brought it up. And these plans are stamped? Yes. So we can move ahead to advance them. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Good. That's, all, yeah. that's all you have with us today, right? All right, so then I have um, Enviro permits for 19 Shinnecock Road, LLC. Good morning, all. Good morning, Clay. Good morning, Clay. Okay, today I'm a little hearing impaired. I had an accident with my hearing aid. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. A good one. And uh, <clears throat> it didn't survive. 
and I could have went to the doctor today, but I'm here. But I'll go tomorrow. Representing your happy you you're here. Please sign in and state your name for the record. Okay. Clay Cofield, viral permits. I'm here representing um, Dave McWilliams for 19 Shinnecock Road Enterprise LLC. Okay, so you're asking for a replacement of an existing 75 foot bulkhead, navy style vinyl. You're asking for 18 inches uh, and a beach staircase, two eight foot returns and five cubic yards of uh, clean <coughs> fill landward and a replant. You're gonna use all non-treated material. Right, <coughs> yes, we are asking for that. Um, he also currently has a building permit with the town to replace the house. The house has been raised and he wants to put this in before he starts on the house, mm. which makes sense. So, yeah, but the question is just on the a the 18. We're not sure that that makes sense. The elevation, when you kind of get on site, especially with the house being raised relative to its relationship to the adjoining properties, I'm not sure. I don't know. Could you take, can you take the, a closer look at that? I, sure. Yes. Um, the, the general tendency with all DEC permits is to raise the elevation, to cut down the amount of uh, water that flows in to the uh, higher out, uh, to the properties, to the roads, and it's their way of raising up the entire shoreline of the state of New York to prevent flooding to some degree. So th this this is included in all DEC permits. Right, we, we recognize that, but we always we always uh, look at the site-specific conditions True. to the area. So what you're going to have to do, Clay, is you're going to have to get us a number. Well, you give me the number. Well, why, why don't we? I, well, I want to extend you raising the house, and you got a whole plan going on. I, I'd rather collaboratively work with you on what's going to make best sense for that site, because the 18 may you know may create some some issues, especially <coughs> when we're only bringing in that small amount of fill uh, and the adjoining property. So I, I think maybe. To do the proper job, you and I can meet on site, and maybe we'll do a Absolutely. little homework on this so we get we get it right for the clients, okay. if you want. Uh, the second issue, um, which I haven't done right. yet, yes. considering what you may have come up with this, um, with the 18 inches, is I haven't got this, the plan stamped yet, and I won't stamp them until you, you tell me what the acceptable elevation right way. so why, why don't you take a look at your schedule get yourself squared away obviously and then you and i can meet on site and um, what days are you free uh it, it you varies. can talk about that offline yeah yeah it varies so you can get a hold of me and we'll uh, we'll see okay. what works you have my cell number sounds good all right otherwise it's acceptable set that up he just says replant yeah, yeah you, you, what are you putting no uh, we I, I can't hear you yeah what are you it's putting into the plants what plants are you going to place? You just say replant. Yeah, you just have to get a better feel, you know, get a better yeah, I'll, description. I'll give of the, you new plants, yes. Well, get, no, what make, kind? you know, no, make a better vegetation plan. That way it's clear. Oh, oh, yeah, I can do that. We can right. increase so you, the vegetation. Right. So, after you, like right, so after you set the limit to where on uh, the height yeah. that makes sense, just we'll provide some <coughs> good planting plan so that the board knows. And show them on the application. Right, exactly. Yes, I will. But the real discussion is about the uh, height of the bulkhead and okay. the, the, the possible We'll get raise. together on that. And I'll, I'll be hearing better then. Right. So catch me. Good we're we're going to hold it pending a, a site visit. Um, and then catch me. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll make it. Yeah, but that okay. would be the only bulkhead in that whole area that was elevated that much. Yeah, I, well, I know. Yeah. That's why I, I, I think yeah. we need to get down there and take a look at the adjoining properties, especially with the elevation that's happening to the house coming up and, and see what's going to make sense there. So I, I think that whole I area is going to be raised. Well, well and let's let's what, get on site and take a look at this, the topography and figure out what's going what's yeah. to make sense, there, especially since the houses are coming up. Okay. All right? Thank you. All right, so I'm going to hold that. Um, next one that I have is a first coastal for Three Harbor. Three Harbor Lane in East Quad. Sounds like Billy Mack and he's here. He's got all his files. He's prepared. I like you. What's happening, everybody? 
Okay. Okay. So this uh, we've been working on for a while, right? Uh, yes, Billy Mac, First Coastal. How are you, Billy? Very good. How's it? Very good. Right, James, we've been working on this one for a while. I believe so, yes. Yes. Um, this is... Uh, 251 feet of existing bulkhead. Yes. And they reduced it to nine inches. Right. I think uh, that was the change. That was the big issue. The big yeah. issue was getting the elevation set, which I think you've done. Yep. We did that and stamp plans. And stamp plans. Yeah. Uh, um, did, I think you, you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There is. Um, th I met with the owner over the weekend. They were, you know, hemming and hawing about the nine inches, but I got them on that. Um, they did want to add a tile pile. I'm going to draw it right here and see if you guys have an opi opinion of objection. Tile. Say it again, tile pile? Tie off pile. Oh, tie off. Oh, yeah, pile. so his boat extends out past this dock, this little slip, and he wanted to put a tie off pile in there just to secure it a little how easier. How, how, how far off you got oh, to put it? It's about six feet off. It's definitely well inside, inside. this little shadow. Yeah, the little pier line that's there. Yeah. That created What's the address of this again? One. Uh, number three. Three Harbor, three three Harbor, Harbor Lane. Lane. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's got a boat slip there. There's a guy with a boat lift and big house over here. So um, it would be off the little dock. Yeah, off there. the little slip, and yes, off, and off the little dock. It's not a dock. It's just a. It? It's a deck that's oh. in the bulkhead. So okay. it's off the the bulkhead like about pier. six feet. Yeah. yeah, it's a it's it's a little pier. Okay. It doesn't go. It won't be as far out as his boat is. Right, and it but won't. It will It'll be inside It'll be of the this. Yeah. It's, it's exactly. got to be inside, inside of that pier. The eastern yes, the edge south, of the so, or region. the northern edge. Right, yeah. Bulkheaded. Right. So you um, right. So you yeah. have to just you got to amend your plans. Yeah, we meant the plans. We'll send those to you. I just wanted yeah. to make sure you guys. It's got to definitely stay inside the pier. So yeah. this is two hundred and fifty-one linear feet of bulkhead. Yeah. Um, where do we stand with a buffer? With buffer this? What is are we looking at? Uh, all included. It's 10 foot and it's vegetated. Okay, the whole yeah. way. 12 the whole inches OC. Okay. There are some walkways that are being replaced, but okay. yeah. yeah but that's around the dugout canal where you get it on and off the boat. So that exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And they're and minimal. They're not, you know. Okay. I think you did what Yeah, this is a 10 foot buffer around the entire okay. slip and, uh, and bulkhead. And no fertilize, is no all that language in there? No fertilize yeah. and just irrigate for the first, and native plantings? Native plantings, big okay. grass, yeah. yeah. That's the only oh, thing that was Andrew, living at Andrew said that you're handing in the, the copies of those. And you said the oh. will be handed Do over, I have so that? No, if you have them or not. Or what, did, idea. What, what did you say? You look yeah, like you were prepared when you walked in. He's prepared. Probably it, right? Yeah. Andrew has his back. Because if there's Ed, stamp, you guys can just you know, move to the next one, to the next one if you want. Does he include the uh, piling on the, the top? Oh. Yeah, he said in the email. So. He yeah. put the piling on already? Yeah, that's what that's what Andrew, Andrew said in his email uh, this weekend. Got a party going on over here. <laughs> 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 All right. Do you have everything you need, James? Looking. And, and you could just stay right there because we got 27 okay. leeward next. A couple more? Okay. Go ahead and go after that. I'm not looking to take up the pine. Um, it is right. Not noted on this plan. Yeah, we're going to need that on the plan. Can yeah. Can you have him just tweak it? And yeah. Yeah, we can hold this over. Put it up. Put, well, we, we. Or no, get it no, ready. If that's the only thing, it could go and you Yeah, just, that's the just, only. Yeah, we just need the new plan. Yeah, so just get a new plan. I mean, it'll that's go on for the next work. Correct. For them, for okay. Guys to approve you it. Do that. Good. Yep. Yep. Sorry. Yep. I thought it was. You want to hand these in, or just keep those? No, in? I'll keep them and make sure you get the right ones. All right. You good, James? Yep. Thank you, James. Yeah. Now, don't don't run away. Okay. Twenty-seven Leeward. Twenty-seven Leeward Associates LLC. Okay. Twenty-seven Leeward Lane in the blog. This is another one I believe we've been working we on. We did for talk about this one as well. Right. And I think we reduced the elevation also to nine inches. So this one here, I think you've uh, you looked at this. Taken. Oh. Yeah, and this is a very simple straight uh, dock with a slip in it. 
Um, and we also have the uh, 10 foot buffer. This would be um, loose stone as a buffer, <coughs> is what they're proposing. Why? Um, when this bulkhead gets overtopped, um, it's got some current to it. Scours so out. This, the, it's like a little bit of a scour pad. It's really. What, what size is the blue stone going to be? Uh, it's a, it'll oh, you're be native stone. Yeah, native so stone. What, what size? Oh, it'll, it'll be like um, three see, quarters. Yeah. You see, it's commensurate with what's there now. So you're, you Wait, have you this. You're going to put crack mm -hmm. stone or you're going to put. Um, Which stone? No, no, oh. here, here, no, no, here. This it's like a around native. So, yeah, yeah, this is what's there yeah. now. Yeah. So, so yeah. relative to this location, this, this one was discussed and you brought it back down, right? Two nine inches, yeah. Two nine inches. Yeah, no, we've done this, but relative to this location, this, this is, you know, they're being better stewards than some of the other properties that are there. So, you know, I think that you, you're playing ball here. You've done what we've asked you to do. Okay. In my could, opinion. Could we consider the possibility of planting and then, of planting beach grass and then using the stone on top of or intermingled I could um, I could suggest that to them they were keen on the idea that the stone was there in the past and they thought that that held up to the current better um, you know and it's odd that there's you can not see they're any pushed back here in quag no I know where it is yeah you, you can see that they're, they're yeah, right, right, by post right they're pushed back yeah. other or properties have beach lane. bright green grass right up to the yeah. water this one's stepped off to kind of you know Give a buffer. Give a buffer there. So I, it is working, you know. Is mm -hmm. it 10 feet, though, at present? It's it will be 10 feet. Right. right. It's, it's not, not 10 not feet. Present. No, it's, it's, so it's less, but they're going to be more. Yeah. I'm just thinking in terms of overtopping, scouring the rhizomes of the mm -hmm. beach grass. Make a, we'll make a, a web yep, beneath yep. that stone. So, you know, it just will fortify that a bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's worth an ask or consideration in the future. Yeah, I brought it up with present. them. They like the idea of the stone. So I didn't know where to go with that. I mean, it's compliant with Blue Book, yeah, they, they and they did, you know, I think you've pretty much checked the boxes. I mean, you know, would native vegetation be better? Absolutely, it would be better. Um, if you went with, like, Cape American beach grass, you'd cut down on the uh, likelihood of spreading, spraying Roundup on these stones to kill the invasive species that'll happen. Yeah, that's it. my only thought, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm, I agree. That, yeah. yeah, I could see a benefit from that. Yeah, I mean, usually, uh, I mean, I mean, it's a non-treated zone. They're not allowed to do anything. Exactly. There, yeah, so. technically not supposed to. Yeah, yeah but right. There's not a piece of grass or yeah, yeah, they right, made their right, weed. Yeah. Okay. Got the gardener weeding it, maybe. All right. Right. Um, right. Uh, you know what? They've they've met the blue book. So I mean, I think you know. Yeah, would native yeah. vegetation be good? But it, it's not bad. I mean, you're you're pushed back. Other properties, when I ride through there, are right on the water, and they're. I can implore them to, to do something, you know, I get it. You can new. ask them. I can ask them. I mean, what do you yeah. have to get them to do that? So that yeah. would be much appreciated. What do you suggest? Right. You want to hold they it? Can you want to have another conversation? No, I'd rather they're anxious to move this along. So if it's compliant and you guys think it'll move along, then then happy to do that. And I then will bring it up as a side note for mm -hmm. sure. If you send them a letter, just put a copy to our office that you had correspondence with them, okay? Okay. That's easy. All right. Thank so you. So we're letting the stone fly. No, well, for now. Let's see how it's, it's, it's really not. You know, it's a tough. That's a tough area in the village of. We need well, to stamp plans, so uh, the plans will. But be he's going to send him a, a letter asking <coughs> for asking, <coughs> and I ask for a copy for our office. Okay. So yeah, we do need stamp plans. If I can get them, convince them. I mean, it's their option. Uh, you know, to to do that, then I'll encourage them. Only because then. They're setting example for all the properties mm. around them mm -hmm. of what yeah. to do. Yeah. One thing I do like <clears throat> about the stone is that, it, and I've seen this in the past, it's easier, it's harder to take the stone out and replace it with the sod in the future, mm. which I've seen now. Yes. Well, well, you, yeah. So just take a boat ride. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's why I'm saying it's like they've been good stewards of pushing it back mm -hmm. yeah. and using stones, and now they're going to push back even farther. So they're working with the elevation. They're working with all the other stuff, and it's like it is compliant. So <laughs> it's not a bad plan. It's a good plan. Yeah, and it works. So is is it always nicer to see native vegetation? Sure, it is. But yeah. you are you are 
comply. Well, it's Doing not right about being in. nicer to see vegetation, native vegetation. It, it's about that it's a true it, benefit it, it for is. our marine environment. It, it absolutely is, but just not in our regulations, <laughs> right? And I'll stress that. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And, and with that whole thing, it's like they have to be good stewards of those plantings because in a lot of cases, you're at the table here and you implore the plantings and then you go back there and they're dead. They're not being Maintain taken right. care of or maintained and then we, we or got cut <laughs> or, yeah. or so cut we've got or mowed mm -hmm. you know we've got something that's you know right. not, not really. working and and now you got an issue whereas here you're looking at a property that is not right up to the bulkhead with the green they've been a good steward just staying off of the waterway they're looking to stay a little farther off takes a take more pressure off so it, it's it's still all in all so they can do a four edge run now a good plan I, it's up to you. I'm, I'm yep. good with this. You go with this? I'm good with this. Okay. Can we move it on? You ready, Bill? Uh, sure. What, we going to the next one. Okay. Yep. You guys got me back to back here. Yeah. Yes. You got plenty of them. I guess so. You're busy guy. Uh, Four Edgeman Drive, Southampton LC. Reconstruct in place 90 feet of existing bulkhead. Increase top elevation <coughs> by 18 inches. Remove existing 4 by 60 ramp float dock replaced with a 4 by 71 catwalk with a 3 by 12 ramp down to a 6 by 20 float 8 inch diamond of piles to over yeah what do you got to say about that uh so this is a um a very low bulkhead uh adjacent to a property that has a high bulkhead um the, the bulkhead adjacent to it is higher than 18 inches so we're proposing to go up at least 18 just inches, to, yeah, just to, just to get a, a, a little yeah. bit higher. What do you mean the bulkhead to the, uh, the adjacent, bulkhead to adjacent the property? The bulkhead to the south right. is a good 24 inches higher than the bulkhead that exists here. Is that a permitted bulkhead? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yep. Um, this this think, is a very I old think, Yeah, I think this bulkhead. was originally built in as a um, retainer. Yeah. And uh, it's functional. It's doing an okay job. It gets over top quite a bit. There's also a, uh, an existing and permitted uh, dock there that is mostly made out of uh, floating. It's all floating material except for the, the ramp that leads to it from the bulkhead. We're thinking about replacing that with more compliant dock, elevated with uh, through flow and a traditional float, single uh, 6 by 20 float with a ramp out at the end. There's adequate depth. It's inside the pier line. Um, and it, it'll allow much more, uh, you know, safer and uh, less uh, destructive of boating use. Is this in Willie Pond? Willie yes. Pond, yeah. yeah. The North End is yeah. not I think it's, it's, it's one of the few docks yeah. that are left there that are all floating. Yeah. yeah. Most all the old floating docks that were just floating yeah. docks have been upgraded since, and this is one of the last ones. But oddly, that had a permit on it. I think it was yeah. 1990. So, um, but yeah, this is. So you're going to put a, a compliant catwalk with light penetrating decking? Exactly. And Bring it out to two and a half feet of water. Which, which the water depth should be, you know, pretty pretty deep there because was, yeah. most of it was dredged. Yeah, it drops off pretty quickly. And we can meet that pier line. Uh, we can meet the, the qualifications of the dock well before the pier line. Um, and, um, yeah, pretty, you know, so nice improvement. But the rise in elevation, though, mm -hmm. of the bulkhead. What the property to the north, yes. what's the height of that bulkhead? There's no bulkhead on that side. Yeah, there's no bulkhead on the north. Right. James here, so yeah. 10.30 will break for James. Yeah, to put the retainer wall. So that, wall. Okay, yeah. that yeah. in my, there, is there anything on that property or is it? No, no right. nothing on that property. So that's a problem. Mm -hmm. You can see on that one picture the height of the bulkhead next door. It's um, definitely higher. Right, but that's not the property I'm talking about. I'm talking right. about the property on the other side. So. Yeah, they do not have a bulkhead. It's the same owner. He uh, likes, you know. So when you say it's the same owner, mm -hmm. this, the sub, the number. This, this uh, property owner right here uh, owns the property so also to the So number four owns the one to the north. Mm -hmm. So family compound. Yeah, so exactly. 
And it's a nice wetland right in front of Fort yes, Yeah, Ranger. there's yeah. a significant wetland yep. there. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's so, survived there for quite some time. I don't think the bulkhead has any impact to it at all. But um, so this is it, just for flood protection for the existing house. Right, but if it goes up 18 inches, what's that going to do nine to inches. the property? Is it nine inches? Nine yeah, inches. the cover oh, sheet's nine, nine inches. inches. OK, yeah. you're right. OK. I think Thanks, we James. have it already. Yeah, because we actually talked about this before. Yeah. Yeah. We compromised on nine inches. That's so right. I'm Let's concerned. I was just reading the Sorry. whole cover sheet. I want to see if you were going to pay attention. <laughs> Clearly, I'm not. Yes. Yeah. So I'm <laughs> concerned prepared today. Yeah. if we yeah. I'm I got files, but nothing else. So yeah. I'm concerned, mm -hmm. um, even if we're only raising the bulkhead on the number four, nine inches, how is that going to affect a really healthy wetland and a healthy shoreline mm -hmm. for, although it may be the same owner at this point, what about going forward? Um, good question. I, I don't, uh, I know that this bulkhead's been there for quite some time, and um, it, there's been no noticeable impact from this bulkhead on the wetlands because they're thriving even in front of this bulkhead. Um, <clears throat> I think going up the nine inches, as was negotiated previously, um, <clears throat> is a minimal amount to just try to help the flooding on the main property, the upland. I don't think it's going to have any impact on the adjacent property uh, wetlands either. They've existed there for a long time with that bulkhead for a very long time, and uh, they seem to be very healthy. And he's not going, he's not raising he's not really raising the the property behind the bulkhead. No. That's what he said. Yeah. So it's basically, just for the waves. So yeah. when can we see the um, yeah the plan the cross section so. At the end of the bulkhead, mm -hmm. there's no return? There is a return. It's there's a 10 foot return. Okay. Yeah, right there. So, is there. So, when it floods, mm -hmm. it's going to come in from the property to the north and it's going to go around that return? <clears throat> and that property to the north has um, historically been flooded. Okay. So I don't think anything's going to change on that. Yeah. But then when it recedes mm -hmm. and it comes off the subject property, <coughs> he might end it's going to scour. It's going to scour the property to the north. That's what I'm concerned about. Well, it's with doing that, that now wetland. very frequently. Almost but every spring high, it's getting flooded and understood. exiting. Right. And the, uh, there's no noticeable scour. But with a nine inch elevation, <coughs> that's significant. So what, is there anything that can be done on that northern side um, in we, terms of? We, to but it would be all on a wetland, so you'd be doing it. Yeah. I mean, you're it, not it's, gonna, it's all wetlands there. So wetlands, not breaking uh, so down. That's, <coughs> actually, you might have less water because you go up nine inches, that's going to stop some of the wave action from going over. It'll stop most of the springs, spring high tides at least, yeah. And if when you end up putting some weep holes in it, like we yeah. did scuppers that we did it on in uh, Cold Spring, that yeah. nice bulkhead. But you're raising the bulkhead nine inches. Are you going to raise the elevation behind the bulkhead no. at all? Well, it'll He's slope down. Are yeah. you bringing in fill? Uh, no, we're not. I, I, I don't think there is. Because if you did bring in a little bit of fill, then yes, it wouldn't fill with water. Ten yards. Yeah, so you're, yards. you're raising the right? bulkhead and you're raising yards. the property behind it so the Flooding is not going to be as much, so there's not going to be as much water emptying into that plus, northerly wetlands area. That's a four inch lip. Yeah, yeah plus a four inch lip, so it would be five right. inches so behind the five Right, so it's actually. You, you really five not, rise. Yeah, and it's then minimal. Have it's a woolly pond. Grass. The wave fetch is very right. minimal. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would be a, a southwesterly wind that you would have any you know, wave right. energy. Yep. And that wetlands is going to absorb all of that, uh, you know, wave action. So as well the beach grass. Yeah. So I, I, I don't see it being negatively impacting the area. If it was like three miles of wave, you know, like yeah. a if you were asking for eighteen, it would be a different story. Yeah. That's what, not said, that's what we said. I think me and Ed, we both settled on nine. I, I think it would. I, I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference no. in there. If you went to eighteen inches, then you're going to have a little bit of refraction off the bottom, <coughs> but 18, uh, eight, nine inches is, is, 
is pretty minimal with fill. It's going to not be that much flooding, so I don't think you're going to get the scouring where you're going to, you know, uh, have it. Plus the, that wetland on the corner, a whole lot of stuff. Yeah. The waves. Yeah. I know. Good wave nice, healthy one. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I you know, it may even minimize the uh, with the water that's rushing out of it after, because it'll minimize the floods. It's just going to act as a baffle. Yeah. This is all wetlands there. Yeah. You don't have, you know, short grass. It's Phragmites. Move it forward. I, I'm okay with it. It's proposed. Trustee Parrish. I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. So we just yeah. need the stamp plans. Yeah, stamp plans, right. Uh, Next one I got for you. I think that's it. You have one. We have to. We have. We have. Do you want to take a break from well, me for a while? <laughs> well, well, we have a we have, we have, we're going to have to take a break in a few minutes. You know, we have a little confidential discussion. We, we have to have at ten thirty. Six oh six Montauk Highway. You want to do six oh six? If you can sure. we do that in ten minutes. Okay. I think so. Okay, 606, do you have that here? Please? I do. Uh, 606 Montauk Highway Water Mill. So this is a property right on Montauk Highway um, that is on Mill Creek. It's just over the bridge that goes from Mill Creek to Mill Pond, um, I mean to Meacox Bay. Um, it's, the proposal is for a 210, um, foot bulkhead to be increased by 18 inches um, with a 10 foot wide buffer planted with beach grass. The one um, benefit of this proposal is it's lawn right up to the edge of the bulkhead right now. So with the buffer, um, I would like to see there be language in here that it's no mow, no mm -hmm. fertilize, mm -hmm. or, um, in addition to the beach grass. Okay. However, I'm concerned about an 18 inch rise. Um, if you pull up the aerial, I looked, I went over and looked from the water mill, mm -hmm. the water mill, like the actual water mill, looking back over to this property and the properties on, on both sides of it do not have bulkhead. They have some sort of rock, like rock. or just yeah. native plantings. Um, this is a 300 foot wide tributary off of um, Mill Pond. Uh, there's no wave fetch here. Um, the flooding that occurs here is minimal at best. Um, I, the bay is quite high right now because we are precluded from opening it. Um, I took pictures of the height of the bay on the bulkhead at this point, and it's probably about um, six to eight inches from the top mm -hmm. with the high bay. So I don't see the need to elevate it 18, 18 inches. Okay. So in my opinion, it should be um, in kind in place with no elevation increase, but I'm open to discussion. Um, the other benefit is this is a creosote bulkhead, so we're happy to get that material out. <clears throat> um, I kind of agree with Ann. I think that uh, it doesn't need to go 18 inches. And um, I'd be willing to convince the property owner to do something less. Um, so let's put it on hold. Put it on and hold. You can go back and look at this site. Well, if we, I'd like to keep moving it. If, if, I, if you guys are good with me halving that to nine inches, how do you guys feel? I know how I, I feel. don't agree with that. Yeah, I mean, you, you would prefer it at level. I, yes. I, I, I get that. I mean, I took pictures of it, Billy, so yeah. I should have mm -hmm. gone over to the water mill to take better pictures, but you can see from these pictures that, I mean, <coughs> you can see where it is on, on the uh, boat. Yeah, you yeah. Know, I know it. Like excessive high ponds. It high. does, you know, elevations. It, it does get overtopped. So I, you know, I'm. The bay right now. The bay is like practically at the opening mm -hmm. line, and with our permit now being in place in Meacox, mm -hmm. 
pr without with the exception of plover, plover season, season we're right. able to open right. now mm -hmm. in a much more managed um yeah you know more a better I, manner I, so what is the topography or elevation change from the house to the bulkhead it grades it's up it, yes. it slopes down to the yeah. yeah. Whichever way you're looking at it, yeah. I mean, <laughs> the water, the is, it, is it a is it a foot over twenty feet or is it two feet over twenty feet? It's probably two feet. Do, do you have yes. the other permits in place? Uh, I think if you if you don't have the other permits in place, I think for the amount of money, I don't money know the answer to that. So but for the amount of money that's being spent here and for the duration of time yeah. that the, the, the structure is going to be there, I I really think that we need to like. We need to take another look at this. That right. way, if there is something yeah. that's warranted, okay. there's, there's some sensibility to it as opposed to just negotiating indiscriminately. No, I know that, I, you know, I, I'm... You, see, you know, I, okay. I, nope. I don't see any other permits that have been listed here. So why don't you, why don't you take I mean, a, another the, look at this The grass site is right to the top of the specifics. Specifics. So at least a six-inch increase hold the runoff back mm -hmm. I mean would be when the, when the pond nice. is high high yeah would be you know yeah. would yeah. be good but I mean 18 yeah. inches that's a lot, a lot. yeah it, it's, so, so yeah, yeah. I, it's very I can go back and take these pictures so at this point it's six to eight inches the water level is six to eight inches down on the on the bulkhead and this is a high bay when so your, if you're saying six inches on top of that, when, when are you planning? This no, morning? when are you planning on uh, letting the pond again? As soon as we can. We have Wait, plover. Yeah, it was plover season, so we're waiting on authorization. Yeah. But well, we my thought is that I know it'll come up more. Maybe I can, you know, look at it again. Yeah. But um, with six inches, you're only going to have a, a two-inch increase behind it, and, and you're going to have a four-inch lip, which just doesn't have to yeah. slow the runoff going into the, yeah. you know, yeah. creek there. However. A buffer works in the same way. Yeah, but, it, but it's also pitched too. So yeah, you gotta, so I'm trying you got to. to lock yeah. here or no. right, get a happy rain. Yeah, so. right, why don't you go, I'll go back? You're, you, you go back. Let's, yep. let's, let's, let's get some. How is it? Spend, how spend how a lot of money and a lot of time on this. Let's, it's, yeah. the it's the opening mark. Let's, let's, Four inches? let's try and, and do a good Two job. Inches? Good, good. Uh, um, um, folks, all right, well, let's get that measurement so we can incorporate I, it. I think this. it's 1030. I think we had a, a planned discussion so for confidential legal advice. We're holding we're this. Hold it. okay. Thank Thanks. you, Billy. I think we need to take a break. Um, you, it, where are you, you going? How long is this going to be? Uh, I don't see it being any more than uh, 20 to 30 minutes. So if, this is just a pause? Just a pause. Yeah. Um, and then we're going to have to come back. If you, you. if you, Scott, if you're pausing for exec and, and just state that on the record and take the vote to enter into it. Yeah, I'm going to do that as soon as Charles. You done asking questions? Um, yeah, just, I just need to know what's going on. We're going to we're going to motion to take a pause in our meeting for the purposes of the board to receive uh, some scheduled confidential legal uh, information and advice, and then we'll come back into work session once that's done. Should not be a long discussion. Thank you, everybody. Is there a Sorry. second for that? Second. Second. Are we all in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. So Sorry for your time. We'll, we, we, have to, we have to have a conversation, and then uh, we'll come back into session as quickly as we can. So. Thanks for understanding. You to, leave. Take, yeah. your, take your stuff with you. Gavel. Oh, yes. Thanks, sir. Second. Second. Trustee Pell, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Let's go back to work session. Hey, Rob, come on up here. Right now? Yep, you're up. 373 Millstone North Sea. Is that you? No, it's not you. It's not it's you. Designs. It's Jim. It's Jim Walker. I'll do Jim's form. <laughs> That's what happens when you have bifocals on. Where did Jim stay or did he leave? He was impressed with what we do, Scott. <laughs> yeah. James. Is Jim out He's there? on his way. Jim is? Yeah. Who? No, no. It, Jim. Jim. Is Jim Walker out there? Uh, you no, I only have him signs his number. Me too. Let's, let's do National Golf. Jim, okay. Jim had to leave. He had 11 o'clock Yeah, 11 o'clock You want to do? Okay. All right. So he's on hold. All right. Okay. Let's do National well, Golf Links, 308 Sebonic Inlet Road, Tuckahoe. Thanks, Charles. 
Yeah. Eight? JMO. No. JMO. Come on up. Wait, what? Rob said he had an 11 o'clock yeah. meeting. Rob said he had an 11 o'clock meeting? No. J Who is an 11 o'clock meeting? We got JMO meeting? right here. Yes. Jim yeah, Walker. Back to yeah, I think somebody else does too, though. Right. We'll just have to ask him. How are you? Good. How's everyone doing? Oh, good. Applica application proposed to construct a 4x6 ramp leading to a 4x85-foot fixed dock utilized by a through-flow decking grade to moss to a 3x12 ramp to a 6x40 float. Uh, this is National Golf Course. Hey, James, can you do an overhead shot of this, please? Met with him a few times down at the location. So where exactly is the location? Because there's um, a there's a this right. But where's the proposed location? It's going to be back in the corner there. Let me uh, pull so up the in, plan here. Yeah. So here. there's about right there. Right there. deteriorated bulkhead there now. The, yeah. the whole entire shoreline has deteriorated bulkhead. <coughs> um, the so deteriorated bulkhead, I would not. I would just cut it down. I would not leave, take it out because it actually holds it from falling in. It's like a break we, we just, in there. Yeah, we've gone over that on the site there. Yeah. yeah, and there's a huge hole in there. They want to put it in there. If they go over, I think about 40 feet. I think we I've pasted it out. Is that's where you're going to put the dock? Mm -hmm. So back in the day, it was a marina there. There, there were docks here. There's yes. a significant current that flows through here. No, not here. This is kind of like a. This is the, in the belly. Yeah, this is way like, back. Yeah, this is kind of like a calmer area there. But there is there is a current like Ann says what goes goes through there, mm -hmm. and um, that's one of its re really. In, reason important to keep that old bulkhead there as like a low cell bulkhead just cut it just cut it down then yeah there's some stuff in the water there where I found clamming but it's mostly a little bit to the east of where that dock is okay so this is a heavily used uh, recreational if if you go back to the the aerial I mean, this area is heavily used. Um, I, I, I think perhaps that this has to be a public hearing. Good. Because Ooh. if you go down there practically any day, there are people fishing. They're not know, fishing. Like they're not fishing where that is. Only no, one who but really uses along, oh, you're right. Along only, that area, yeah, they don't go fishing on the bulkhead because they're not allowed on the bulkhead. They start up by the north end of that bulkhead and walk north around on the beach. Mm -hmm. What that area is used for, you see people with the um, doing yoga on the on the mats, on the stand up boards and you know power boards. Yeah. Power boards. It's not going to affect. Is this going to affect any of that because I, it, people I, are putting docks all over them. I, I think. I think that um, this is a significant change in this. There had been historically there had there had been two docks further along. Yes, there the was time docks here public here many, many years ago. ago. Right, but I mean, back in the nineteen early nineteen hundreds, there were for sure. But and because then more recently, the yeah. they said it was a, a huge mooring area too for very large sailboats yeah. back, yeah. back yeah. in the day. Yeah, two two centuries ago, late eighteen hundreds, yeah. early nineteen. We're not getting out that far. Right, we're going to get to the two and a half standard. Try to keep it tight. Right, so we, so sailboats are, you know, they're still going to be able to do all that, but looks like they're all further than two and a half. Well, where are we at, Blue Book regulation wise here? And also, it's four, it's forty foot, where it should be twenty foot. You can, all right, so you can go with a much shorter dock. Right, there. so you you yeah. keep it inside that right, little so dugout. Mm -hmm. So you got to clip this to the blue book regulation of things that we customarily would approve, not. Uh, See, the reason they want to do with, because um, I was an AX to, to, we get to cut more it more down more. to two docks or three docks set, and the reason they said they, for the members who are paying for this, mm -hmm. they come over and 
Um, I think there should be a well, Is it going to be a commercial yeah, dock? Yeah, no, it's just yeah. from members that come over, play a round of golf, get on the boat, go home. So yeah. it's, it's a 6 by 20 float? or is it? I, see, I put in a 6 by 4 hoping. Yeah. Yeah, so if it's a to, to accommodate to, you know, the bigger the float, the more boat. Yeah, why is it different 20? than any other thing we put in? Yeah, Shinnecock Bay or anywhere else where people yeah. are kayaking and clamming and yeah. all the other stuff. Yeah, I mean to be consistent, it would be a six by twenty float to two and a half feet of water. And water. if you and if you put it far enough off that eastern shore, you could tie boats on, on both sides side. of it. And there's not a lot of current in there, only on a first part of rising pool. But with that with that bulkhead so close over there, you know. We'd have to move it over a little bit. Uh, but you yeah. use both sides of it. Yeah, I mean well what's the distance? Maybe it's plenty plenty there, but the, it gives it a little bit of shelter is what, is what I'm saying. So you may not have to move it, but I don't uh because we actually also talked about putting it against the bulkhead. Um but this this was a little bit better idea. Because there's more water, because along the bulkhead, it, it kind of like it it's pretty shallow now. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So, it so, so where very you've, deep there, but, it, deep. It's but where no you cited this, you've already taken this into consideration, correct? Yeah, yeah. Spent a, we spent a lot, a lot of time. A lot of time. So you've you've taken into careful consideration of where you've cited this. I think the issue is the, the length, right? The length and the depth of water. I think we're right. Like, so I think you got a hundred feet from mean high water. No, but you got to bring it back to six, uh, two points. Five. We only go to 2.5. You're, you're, okay. you're at 4.9, it looks we, like. Right, so you, you got to just, you got to bring it back to what we customarily permit. It should be half the distance that it's proposed. Right, so yeah. once you cut it back to the size and you, you, you're, you're pulling it in, it, it's, it's no different than any of the other approvable structures, that's, right? That's why I think that's no. really where you need is to this, be. Is this land, is it, what is it? Is it commercial land or is it residential? Residential. So it's residential, you can only have, Scott's right, you can only have a 20 by 40. I mean, 20, 6 by 20. Okay, I'll right. try so it. If it was, if it was commercial, part of the, mer of the golf course, then you could say it's a commercial application where you can, um, where you can do it. Or if it's like what we did at, down at Willie's Pond, mm -hmm. where the, all the homeowners was like six lots on the road or five lots on the road, and they had all had water rights, so we each gave each lot a slip. That's the only other way you can do it. Okay. So you gotta, you gotta, you know, just revise it so that it's an yeah. approvable like it, like project. That's why. Yeah. It, it, then it, it pulls back. It's you know, it's much it's less. Uh, obtrusive. Yeah. yeah it, it's it's very comparable to the docs that you showed me on that survey that you gave yeah. me. Yeah, I don't know the scale of this so though. These, these look like they just been old fixed docs. Was it? According to the survey, that there have been a clubhouse there. So I guess. Yeah, the clubhouse is. is you see, old, this, see, it says clubhouse just below <laughs> the docks. It's the it's the old house where yeah. the Tucker House School owns. I think that's where you can oh, see the okay. pipe. There's the, the, the water pipes are still in there, a little bit of the foundation. Yeah, but they, that they moved it up there, and they right. was actually was a rowboat station there and the part of the golf course. Was so, but that was decades ago. Yes. Yeah, many but it's decades good to learn. ago. Right. Oh so no, you, no, the so history's you, good. You revise it to meet the blue book yeah. regulations of what the board consistently and customarily this is outside Approved. of that yeah. bring it back into that yeah. spec okay. so and since it since it's one since it's residential you just have the one flow it's okay a, then all the book should not you know get too much of a fall. all right so the this piece of land so the access to ram island runs yeah. across it so National owns up to the Ram Island driveway, mm -hmm. and then Ram Island owns the driveway and the piece to the south. So, are you not considering a public hearing? Well, if it meets the blue book and they're pulling it back from right. it's like right now, it's looking like it's very large. Now you're, you're coming back to blue book standards um, with a six, one that, float, we, six by 20 that, that we already have had a public hearing on what our regulations are, what we customarily do, and he's pulling it back to a six by 20. Um, I think you said it's going to be a footpath. At a, you're at maintaining a, consistency with form. what we customarily do. However, um, with our, our rules around public hearings, it states that there is <coughs> not significant, it's been determined that the following projects do not raise a significant degree of public interest or public input. 
I think that, you know, given that there are many people that use this area and that trans and that go in and out of this inlet, I think that there's public interest here. Well, well, how is is it going to impede that anyway? Yeah, I mean, is I go out of that, that? that and up probably 15 times a week. Is it going to impede yep. this? It's go not going to impede, far. but I think there will be public public interest, and I think we need to give the public the opportunity to weigh in here. How does that translate to consistency of what we generally do in, in any other application? Or are we going to trigger um, a public hearing on every single one of these structures throughout the entire township? So given that this is at the mouth of an inlet, given that this is not at the mouth. It's the just mouth is it's just two hundred feet away. It's feet just away. inside the mouth of an inlet, given that this abuts um, a private property that um, trans tra that translates across it. Do, do you can you put up for us to look at uh, the plans? So you I, you probably can get a letter from the two brothers with no objection to it. Yeah. That's no big deal. And what about the people that use the bulkhead and that use the area, use that the bulkhead's road private end? Prop. They own the bulkhead. Yeah, so bulk I'm sorry, not the bulkhead, the road end. The beach. It's, it's five hundred six five six hundred feet away. The road end and the beach. I think you could ask them for straws there. Um, I'm trying to look out for the residents of the town well, and others who use this so, area. So let's look at this. I, I so don't see any problem with having a public hearing because I don't really see there being that big of a situation with the dock. It was a bigger situation when we approved the bulkhead there. That was a very contentious uh, because people were fishing down there, working with the highway department, recon, uh, reconstructing that beach. Um, I mean, having a public hearing, I understand what Ann is speaking about as far as <coughs> user groups. Um, I don't see them really coming forward and speaking negatively, but at least giving them the chance to, to, to come if they want to. Um, I, I, I mean, it, is, it, would be an, it would be a new dock in a, in a spot that hasn't been a dock there since That's what we the do 1800s. Every day, um, and but, but it, it's a highly used area with recreational fishing, um, some commercial fishing. Um, so I don't see a problem with having a public hearing. I think it would actually, you know, clean it up and make it, you know. Uh, you don't think it's going to trigger a public hearing on every single dock that we work on throughout no, the entire township? No, no, because th this is a this this has a lot of different user groups that I think might want to have some input in, and. <clears throat> And I know personally, putting a dock in that area might uh, cause some hardship for some of the local baymen to go in there, uh, you know, bait fishing because that's a very productive area to go bait fishing. So if there's, you know, I mean, that's my personal knowledge of in clamming. Uh, is it going to interfere with anybody in that clamming? So I mean, I'd like to have a little bit of input if the those user groups want to come through before us and if they don't we put the public hearing out we can close it and we can adopt it. you you have to revise your plans before you can go anywhere mm -hmm. because you're outside of spec correct yeah right so I think when you look at your plans it's it's quite far but when you bring it back to what's an approvable uh, project it it becomes uh, much less uh, okay. of an issue that's what I'll do I'll revise the plans get them to you as soon as possible okay so we don't set public hearings at this at this no stage. we don't have we don't have the material right. that yeah, has to wait. revise plans yeah, right and can you get like a see how the gis map is there right now can you overlay the dock on that i could probably tr so, so we can have a good concept of what you're proposing here <laughs> i could do that yeah right chaps back yeah. to the drawing board yep. so yeah. you so you just uh Summarize, you want a new cover sheet and plan showing the 6 by 20 float and bring it back to two and a half feet of water, as well as an aerial with the proposed uh, dock on Let, it. Let's, and, and we'll look at it at that point in time, and then the board will have another conversation, make the determination of how we made sure that it looks and what makes the most sense. But mm -hmm. we'll reserve that discussion until you at least provide an, an, a, you know, a, a plan that's more commensurate with what is actually going to be there, not what's there, not what you're showing now. 
I think I'm walking away with this. I think uh, in a, with positive, positive outlook on it. So, okay. Uh, so okay. we get that, then Bill will schedule it for the next yeah. work session. Yep. That we yeah. receive okay. that stuff, and then right. All right. you'll get call when you're ready. That's the most sensible way. Yep. That's fine okay. with me. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Who's who's up next? <clears throat> Ed, somebody had told me to give you that. You might want to make a quick read. Okay. Oh, Beaver Dam. Yeah. Three. Nice. All right. Thank you. Yep. Take care, all. Who's up next? Thank you. I think I am. Three seventy-three minutes. So did you do? I'm going to hold that over. You are one fourteen thirty-one. That's on home. Yeah. Fourteen thirty-one. Fourteen thirty-one. Fourteen thirty-one. Meadow Lane, Village of South Southampton. Hello. Good morning, Steve Lemansky. Uh, Steve, you Steve? Today. above ground. It's my Steve. favorite favorite spot. <laughs> Good answer. That's a low bar, right? <laughs> we have an as-built permit request for a four by three stairs, a three by I don't know thirty by point seven foot walkway to four feet. Basically, it was a permit Water. issued, and Water it was built plastic. slightly different than. And then we went for a CO, and they told us that we had to go. Yes. Get the official okie dokie. So. Yes, we're looking okay. to. Uh, let's see here they are over here. And I submitted some in, an updated Asville survey. Yep. On this it's in a Doug here. Lagoon on the uh, north side of Dune Road. Um, there's at least one other dock. That is currently in this Doug Lagoon. Um, it has adequate water depth. Um, it's pretty much James. It's everything compliant yeah, that we need. Steve, could you just explain what the differences were? Um, the previous I, permit. I think the original drawing that was approved by, that was done by InterScience. Yeah. Had a. Um, um, like a few steps and then a, a walkway that was a little bit higher that okay. prevented them to walk from one side of their property to the other kind of got in between so they yes. just built it a little bit lower. Oh, so you don't have the steps for maintenance. You don't have crossover steps and it goes from, the, you can walk down the middle. Exactly. That was yeah. it. So it, allow, it allows for public access for pass and repass in that in the area of the Doug Lagoon. So you guys have to pass and repass? Yeah, that was actually better than having stuff there. Yeah. So uh, just matching it up so to. Uh, correct. So are you putting steps on the north side as well? I just. Um, that's the so north side, right there where the arrow cursor is. Yeah. You know? And yep. then you come back up, and then when you come down, there's a. Instead of going across at, at a level that would have been about, I guess, three feet. Or, yeah. Um, that went straight across to, you can see the, the last bit of the steps the that come down from the house. Yes. So we just, those, those were down, ready down at the ground. Um, so then we just put the walkway right uh, at grade to, so we didn't have to be, go, like, go up and down yeah. to go from one side to the other. It's already built, so if you want to go look at it. Right. And it's and to the west of Road D. Right. Yes. And yeah. is there, um, th there's an Asville fee that's being assessed to yes. this? Yes. I think we paid it. Yes, yeah. they paid it. And so it's accessing then the, I, I'm just confused because what I'm looking at is there's significant wetlands that are on the north side of this Doug Canal and this. On the this, it's, it's on the south and north side, but uh, it's, right. it's a dug lagoon, right. and it has a very little, uh, small, like almost like a drain that goes out to the bay. Right. That you can navigate at high tide. Right. So the portion of the that's walkway the, that's already built. The southerly end is lower down, so you can pass and repass if you want to right. walk along that meadow. There. The plan okay. view of the previous approved plans would look like that. Okay. The, the only difference is it was a of bridge from the house to the dock. Right, and then it just got lowered to for access for left and right. Okay. I'll go look at it. So I'd like to move it forward. All right. Yeah, I'm fine with it. I think it's a good move. Yep. Thank you. See you around Thank the campus? You. Yes. Thank you, Steve. Great. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Now. Stand. And they are stamped, so we can advance. Thank All you. Right, let's advance again. 
Uh, Strong's Old Fort Marina, LLC, 74 Little Nick Road, Shinnecock Hills, and consultants. Did I misunderstand before? Did you have an 11 o'clock meeting? No, I think oh. it was Jim Walker. Okay. I thought I heard you say you No, did I well. joked that I would cover for Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he would greatly appreciate he that. He probably wouldn't mind if I did a good job. <laughs> True. True. Got what he wanted. <laughs> <laughs> he would. Um, so, of course, I just brought up the wrong file, too. <laughs> Jim took it. <laughs> you might have two files here, like one on top of the other. It's hard to tell. No, I had a big, I had the big engineering plan on top of it. Mm. That's just kind of embarrassing. These here? I have it on the screen. Rob, you want these? Yeah, I'll just use that, but I have a little worried about what just happened to my file. Uh-oh. It seemed to be at my seat. Um, but let me deal with this first. So, um, probably the easy way to do this is the engineers depicted this kind of in three stages as an existing uh, and then sort of a mid-construction and then a final construction. Um, so it's not going to get much better though. Yeah, you could you can do it one at a time, James. If you just kind of zoom in on that, I can. That's where we are now, Jim. The same thing here. Um, so this is the same site that you all just looked at within the past couple of months for yep. the maintenance work on the floating docks and the bulkhead. Um, and I, James can not just yet, but I'll ask James to pull up just a photo. Um, so you can take a look at it. But basically, there's an existing co concrete boat ramp which extends down to the seaward edge of this dashed area. And that's the area that they're proposing to fill. Yeah, so that ramp starts there and then goes all the way down to the right. Seaward. To seaward to where this line is drawn. And the basic concept here is that they're taking a old concrete boat ramp and turning it into a bulkheaded elevated boat launch. So um, they can use a travel lift. Correct. Not, they're not going to use a, a trail. It's, um, to go in and out of the water. So, so the travel rails that are there are being removed also. Yeah. So this is basically just becomes a spot where they can hoist the boat directly down and jumping to part three, but you're so forcing me to jump they, in. When they remove that concrete slab and they make it up to grade. Correct. They're going to put, that's where they're going to back up the boat from the travel lift to wash the bottom. So we, well, to actually launch the boats. So there's going to be a concrete uh, launch pad constructed at the seaward end of this. Yeah, but you're going to have to have some type of drainage in there because that's where they're going to wash the bottoms when they take them out. And, and it's, and a containment and vessel like yeah. they did at Hampton Watercraft. Yeah, so they're going to, have to, you're going to have to do that. Okay. Which is no big deal. Okay. But pulling back a second, so the idea is that they're not filling any natural bottom. The only bottom that's being filled here is what's currently concrete. Um, and that'll be demoed and removed to the maximum extent that they need to install the piles. It's, it's actually good the, because the water won't wash down and go to the water from the parking lot. Correct. So this is, you know, this is how it looks. You want to pull up, James, do you have a photo? I, I think I've probably submitted photos with the application. Of oh, yeah. the launch? There that's, it is. That's a yeah. lot easier. <laughs> yeah. So that's just going to raise the grade. Correct. Yeah. And, and change the angle so that it's flush. Okay, so the water does not wash down in that one when it rains. And those two rails that you see get removed. Right. And then this here becomes your new configuration. So the waterway that's to the side <coughs> where the ramp is. I know if you can blow it up a little bit, you can see this old bulkhead 
There's some space between the bulkhead and the travel rail that will continue to remain waterway because, again, the only area that's being filled is the existing concrete. Um, and then in the final configuration, you'll have the launch pad here um, with the steel pad at the edge and then a ramp and float. And this is basically just for temporary servicing of the boat. So they'll go into the water and then they have a float that they get tied up to before launching. Are, are they extending the pad at all, Rob? They're not. So they're just, so, it's basically as if it's getting like lifted up correct. right in place. Well, that's a good way to describe it, actually. If you just imagine being able to take oh. the existing. Like a bridge. Yeah, so. like a bridge, if, if that could lift up. Okay. And the idea of that was just for you and the DEC, for all the agencies, um, that there just be no naturally existing bottom. I mean, not that it's, uh, you know. Productive. And estuary on display in there or anything, yeah. but the idea is that the bottom that's been historically developed with this concrete ramp is the same exact area, no more, no less, that would mm -hmm. be developed with this launch pad. And you're removing the rails on both sides. Right, so both those travel rails get removed. Um, the bulkhead that you're looking at there on the right gets removed in place. I mean, it's a bulkhead, it's really I mean, it's, it's basically like jetty construction. There's not going to be any backfill on the wetland side of that. There's a private property on the other side. You can see where James really is hovering. There's a bunch of extensive wetlands that go down there. Um, so there's no fill or anything proposed to that. That's, that's just, just, no right that's just in, in, in kind in place, except that it won't be CCA timber. Um, and then the... And of course, there's some new bulkhead construction just because you have to create the, the new sections of bulkhead to form that space because yep. that once that's lifted, obviously, it has to be retained. Do, would you have to put that bulkhead back into the north? For well, here? Yeah. You don't oh, want okay. to because that would keep the boats from going over. Oh, definitely, the yeah. It yeah, keeps it it, deep. yeah, absolutely. Not you know fell back in. It's what it's what actually forms the usable slip. Yeah. So it'd be like having any boat. It would be having like any boat basin or boat slip without a structured side. And removing it would change the whole wetland situation here because yeah. that that wetlands would migrate or maybe dissipate somewhat from the removal of the yeah. bulkhead. It, it wouldn't have the protection of that bulkhead. So that yeah. would. I mean, unrelated to this project, just with Anne's concern with the wetlands, the wetland would then be more exposed to potential erosion on that side. Could you wind back the bulkhead a bit? Does it need to be, does it need to come the whole way? Well, it matches the match? other side. No, I understand. It's a commercial establishment, so they're going to have to retain what they need for it to uh, yeah. protect the function. And it is also, it's all on private bottom, too. So it's not an extension out into the public waterway. The basin's actually contained within the right. parameters of the property line. Yeah, I think that you're going to have to maintain consistency with that or you're going to have problems. And launching large boats there on a windy day, that bulkhead does break down the wave action and yep. allow you yep. to uh, easily retrieve and put the boats in and out. And you do and have you a thriving You can wetland. see where the, on the other side is very shallow. Yeah. With that bulkhead saving it, saving the wetlands. Well, it's also dredged in there too and it keeps it deep. Yeah. Otherwise, if you remove that bulkhead, it would fill in and it would be a constant dredging, uh, maintenance dredging. And that's the other element to this too, is that they are going to maintenance dredge inside the basin itself. So again, not out in the public waterway, but just strictly within the, on their, the, own, on their own, own property. Well, Correct. Within yeah. the confines of a commercial marina, which Correct. is important for maintenance. Yeah. This is basically the second phase of strong sort of modernizing and upgrading this, yeah. you know, historically established site. We, we talked a lot about the history during the last application mm -hmm. process, so I don't want to go into all that again, but okay. You got it. Is same spot. W that will be muck that they'll be dredging, right? Not sand. It'll be a combination of sand and silt. Where's it going to go? It's just going to be retained for backfill behind the bulkhead. Oh, cuz I was going to say if there was possibility for it to go to the end of the road, either at Mill Pond or Far Pond. Well, if it's got a lot of organics in it, it's yeah. going to be difficult to... Well, uh, put, it, put it where the uh, 
launching ramp is going to be. Yeah, it's have, all it, it's all be, slated. Yeah. So they got it all planned. You got it all planned. No, so so basically, what the engineer is showing is that dredge material will be used as backfill for oh, the in-place replacement of the bulkheads. Okay. And then there's clean sand and clean angular stone that's filled just to create a solid base underneath the, the launch itself. So okay. that organic material probably won't be used as backfill below the, mm -hmm. the new launch, but it will be used as backfill mixed with sand behind the bulkhead, you know, the upland bulkhead side that's going to be replaced. I suspect they'll probably end up doing this work in connection with the bulkhead replacement that was covered on the other permit. I know Same they were time. they are pretty anxious to get the, yeah. the permit for the floating docks, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if the, all the bulkheading work is basically done at the same yeah, time. Once you get a contractor there. Yeah. I, I cleaned it up a lot. Make sure there isn't something I'm missing. No. So that's really it. Okay. Well, it looks like a, a good plan cleaning up the whole area, so removing some of the old treated lumber and creosote lumber that's there and uh, bring new non-treated vinyl, which is good. So what's our next step? Advance it. Yeah. yeah, and you have and these yeah, are engineer stand plans. plans. Yeah. If you find them. We have our copy. And my copy. Rob just can't find his copy. He'll find it. He'll find it. I'm sure it's sitting right there for some maybe reason. It's I'm in just the car. Billy went and looked. Thanks, Billy. Maybe Advance Billy, it. Maybe Billy took it. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to do your project now. Billy only has some skinny with files. Foot, with a white tool. <laughs> <laughs> Are you able to do the red end and then cut me loose, or do I need to go back to my workstation? What do you want to do? Uh, I've just, Bill has Beretta on for, for final advancement. Tony Beretta? Uh, not Tony. Um, it was one you had, well, you had approved the plans and the application basically in, in uh, it's concept. It just needed the engineer's That's a different plans. section. Do we have what we need? Yeah. I can pull it up. Quickly, if you we have what we need, then we yeah. probably don't need Then you don't need, need me to stay. No, right. you don't need to it, was no, just, it was just a stamped version of what you'd already okay. As long yeah. as you've provided what we requested Plus and we, we see that, yeah. you don't have to yeah. speak to it. There were, no, there were no outstanding substantive issues. It was just you needed the stamped you plans. You don't go look for your, okay. your other plans. Yeah, 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 we don't want you to lose anything else. I'll be sure to keep you updated. Thank you. All right, thank you. We're good for that Okay, all right. So you want to advance that one while we're on? Well, yeah, if you yeah, want yeah, to, yes. Yeah, that's fine. Um, Paul Wexler, 33 Common Point Drive, Envira Permits, Inc. Hello again. Good afternoon. Morning, whatever it is. Almost afternoon. Almost, not quite. We're here to look at uh, to remove the uh, to move the terminus end of the existing town and DEC approved seasonal pier boat lift structure to within 15 feet of the riparian rights property line. Riparian rights property line determined by Keith M. Wochuk, land surveyors. So yes. Clay, want to give us a little overview of what's going on here and why we're talking about riparian talk rights? Talking about riparian <coughs> rights and. Repairing of rights um, is the joint property line of any, any two property owners in the state of New York. It is covered under the New York State regulations and field and streams. There's five ways of determining it, and four of them below, uh, are attributed to freshwater streams and rivers, and one is attributed to uh, salt, salt water environments and docks and piers and 
in the salt waters of the state of New York. <clears throat> uh, the easiest way to, re to uh, describe a riparian rights is if you, if you lived on a canal, and at the end of the canal was one house and two houses were on either side, each homeowner has a projected property line and that would go straight off his property line. So the question comes up, who has the right to put their boat at that point? I mean, it's not directly this, but I want to discuss what riparian rights does. So you have two, two property owners, each of, them, each of them claim to have the full use of their bulkhead, but they don't. They have 45, there's a, there's a uh, you take the 90, you divide it in 45, and you have the riparian rights property line. In this situation, you have two home, homeowners that come up this way, and you want to you know you want to know where each property owner has the right to put that that boat. So that's what it comes out to. So, you want to? So basically, right now there's currently a uh, a dock there. It's, yes, um, there's a seasonal aluminum uh, uh, pier, I call it a pier, uh, that projects out from the shoreline that's been there for a number of years and a number of DEC permits and a number of town permits. And as the, as the, as the siltation from the adjoining properties uh, moves to the left, it becomes the present position become of the bolt that becomes non-usable. So you want to swing, you want to re-angle this structure then, so that it goes more towards the northwest, right? So the yeah. the present, the proposed structure is the one that's more towards the top of the screen, and the present structure is the one that goes straight out. Is that what I'm understanding? Right. Okay. Correct. Yeah, that's. That's, I that's, don't know. That's going against the uh, extended property lines. So. Yeah, that's over the blue book. That's within ten feet. It's over. It's so over. It looks like it's in front over of the other property. So hmm. how's that going to work? I don't. So it's in. It's in this front of and within. We okay. have. All right. Which you have a copy of the the larger one. If you need it. Without anything on it. This shows the repairing rights of all the property owners that are in that area. No, but we set the guidelines in terms of where on our bay bottom it is that we site docks, right? We've been doing yes. this forever, yeah, right? We don't 10 feet off of your extended property line, which right, is which not, it's not shown on here. It's 10 feet off of the repairing property line, which gives each homeowner an equal use of that piece of property that, that is, um, you have jurisdiction over. So it's not so I, I don't, don't think this is a scene you're, here. You're confusing us. Right, right. Yeah, let's, let's stick to, let's you, stick to you, Blue Book. The reason you want to move it because it's getting too shallow over there. And yes. you want to swing it around. So stay with that. Forget about all the other stuff because you got enough room on you, you, You're 15 feet away from it. No, right? it's not. Well, he, no. This, this is, this no, is he's not like correct. Over the extended no, property line. Extended he's, property line. He's over, goes, so you're going to have to move it over. See it? See the way it angles? Yeah. I, I, the original dock was... 10 feet or 15 it's 10 feet, feet off, off the off. extended property line. The property line. What's the pier line here? 135 feet. What's the length of this dock as it stands now? Currently? Yeah. It's like 150 feet. Uh, we gotta, we gotta, yeah. You got to focus on it. We, we, we got we to That's why you got to move it. We, yeah, we have to focus on our Blue Book regulations and what's going on So here. that's what I was trying to do. We I can extend say, If you can extend it. To, is, to achieve it, but then that's not within your blue book. Yeah, it's beyond. Right. So it, it doesn't work with pier line. It, so, so the plan, this plan doesn't work because it's the extended property line issue, and then the other plan doesn't work. It does work if you go by the state law. We go by the blue book. We go by the blue. We go by our regulations on where we cite things on our bottom, and we need to maintain consistency. The state, as we talked about with the elevation uh, agreements that they uh, allow is different than what we do uh, locally. Um, the state also has to take into consideration that the property that they're on is the trustee's property. So we, 
like to have a say in where these things go. Of course. So we need to take a, a harder look at this other than just, you know, painting with some brush of, of some, some rights that are violating principles that the trustees have held uh, in, in the Blue Book regulations. So we need to take a harder look at And in the past, we've had to increase uh, peer lines, you know, have public hearings and increase peer lines where, you know, things have changed and it wasn't working out. In site-specific areas. Correct. Right. Yeah. We'd be Correct. glad to limited. do that. Right. So we, we have to take a harder look at this um, overall, this whole area overall as things are changing here. James, can you? It changes within weeks. Hold it. It is unbelievable. Yeah. Again, no. If you've been down there, uh, it, it is filling in at such a rate. It's like inches per week. Well, I think there's a small stream that transects this little peninsula, yeah. right? It goes the whole way across. Yes, there is. So I think that's what we're looking at, and that stream feeds, feeds the pond. That's a really healthy ecosystem that's what's the on source that is. point. And um, if we need to look at an increase in pier line, Perhaps we need to do that for this property, given that stream's presence. Yeah, because we can't be violating the other principles um, of the consistency that we've we've tried we've maintained in the blue book. We gotta take a little bit more of a holistic look. To your point, based on the site specifics. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you look at the property prior to the uh, storm that we had yeah, around yeah. Christmas time, there was multiple issues with sand being deposited here right the property to the west the limb property which had a bluff was all compromised with the, the, with the stone that was there was compromised with the wave energy and the tidal surge and all that material has been pulled into the bay yes and and common point as it was back in the 50s and 60s was much longer and narrower and now it's shorter, shorter. and stouter and the material is moving out um, I, I would opt for a public hearing extending the property line, I'm um, extending the peer, peer line, line for this over this riparian rights because the riparian rights or the our rules and regulations is the extended property line. And right. we've, you know, the 17 years on the board and that's how we've done, done business here as far as 10 feet off the extended property line. Okay. These riparian rights are, could get really controversial mm -hmm. if the applicant and if the person next door is having an application to put a dock in and there's another dock on a property further down, it's going to be basically putting three docks in like a, a teacup and they're yes. all going to go into each other. And it's, I'd rather stick with this dock extended out to the north instead of going to the north and northwest with, with the projected property structure. line. Uh, that, that would be repairing rights. James, can you just draw well, back a little bit? So there is a property with the dock just to the west. Yes. It, um, do we need to look at both these structures? Probably it's not should. Because, like, I'm looking like he at... Has enough water. There's, I'm se looking there's seasonal docks, both of them. There's, right. Yeah. But you should probably look at the whole area. If, right. If it's well, changing so rapidly and has changed so much, it's probably from... A, just well, like we looked at sections... We, we do have an a, a application before us for a dock in between these two docks. Right. That's why I'm bringing this up. Oh, you approved we, that one, I believe. Right. No, we were in the process of reviewing it. There were some questions that we didn't uh, get uh, cleared we, up at the we, last hearing, so we were asking to get the material and bring it so back. We, we should look at this whole area then. Well, yes. We, what we did in Bay Point was to look at specific tax map right. numbers, I think. Right, James? Okay. Yeah, uh, I don't when think we you're extended use the whole area because it's only this corner here that's yeah, just, oh, no, the, just, just the affected saying, properties. Yeah, yeah, like probably three or four properties right in that sort of if you if you cove. Cove. If, you, if you move out further, you could see the other back. docks. You, and when you move west, the pier line is still 135 feet, but that does accommodate docks. In this area, because of the erosion and accretion into the bay, um, it's they're, they're losing their ability to utilize their docks. So so let's set a pier line that makes sense based on the current conditions that are going on yeah. right now. For, uh, for those, I would for say that section. Well, for I would property. say between this property and um, this one, the three properties here. We did similar to West Hampton, didn't we? Yeah. And yet, you, we also might want to discuss and have one common dock for, for with three boats, for three lifts. Not in this area, Billy. Really. 
know, it's a tough area. Yeah, no, I think the that, that, that the it's residents, a tough area since some, I, I, of I think, some of the residents don't quite get along. I, I think it's so, I think it's a peer so, I think it's a public yeah, hearing yeah, and a sensible yeah, peer yeah, line yeah. adjustment like has been yeah. done in other yeah. areas of the of the town so that it's done the right way. We don't have the violations of the uh, extended property lines and there's there's rhyme and reason yeah. to the so, situation. So Claire, I think if to have you do a little bit more further research is to take um, the mean high watermark and go out to a point where um, there's like, it, it, it gets deep pretty quickly. So like four feet of water, and then we'll figure out the distance of that okay. on, these, on these couple of properties here. And then I'd rather be, have the dock longer now because I know the environment's gonna keep filling in. It's gonna keep filling, filling in. Filling in. So if we do a longer, do a longer pier line, we'll get more time. We'll get, but we'll yeah. put the dock in closer where it, where it conforms to our rules and regulations. Right. But eventually, if it needs to be moved out, it would be just an amendment to the permit. Would that be a good way to go with it? I think so, right? Rather than build it so long. Yeah, okay. initially. Okay. So back to the drawing board on this. So it's going to require a public hearing. So I would, I would. No, need I already know where it is. So. I know where it's got to go. So I would need you to give me some water depths there, Beth. Yeah. Think. So, okay. and then we now, would. Now, do you need them by a surveyor? Yes. Or yes. We need okay. official so, hydrographic. And, yeah. And we okay. need them for uh, significant I'll get, uh, I'll get the same surveyor in there. Yeah. And we'll have, uh, he may already have them. Okay. Well, water I mean, depth. would we do from like. Uh, in, so. The subject property, so one, two, three, four to the yeah, four properties, four to properties to the northwest. To the northwest. I want the four properties. One more over, because that that might get as the time goes, that's going to get. I mean, more you, to the you can. North. So so four so in. I do want the one more property over. No, no, I said. Four. So you want which four properties? The one with so the two piers on either side. Yeah. Why don't we Why don't we start? Um, it used to be Hidden Cove, the uh, little uh, housing area there. Um, I'll sit with James. And give me the property names. Give, give the property names and tax map numbers. Good. And then we'll segregate it out because there's a, there's a seasonal dock, then there's a permanent dock, and then there's another permanent Permit dock, time. and then there's a vacant property, and then there's that another subject. dock. Yeah, so, so I'll, okay. I'll come up with the uh, area that needs to be uh, looked at and... Uh, have the bathymetric surveys done. Okay, yeah, take a, and let's take a look at the, at when, the area. When would, I, well, when would this public hearing be scheduled? Well, the it depends then, on when you get the bathymetry. When I get the bathymetry. Really give you a, we couldn't really even give you a time right this second. We're too no. preliminary here. Yeah. Oh, too okay. preliminary to give you yeah, a time. Well, so there's two and then, then the public Get, get the information back. We'll work up a schematic so I'll get it back to you. And then you can present that to us at our next work session. And at that point, if we have all the information for the public hearing, we could schedule the public hearing for for the next meeting after that. All right. Do you need to stamp plans by that hearing? Well, no, no, no. Okay, no, no, no. Because things could to, get adjusted, so we just need yeah, to make sure. All right. Wait till the you know the very well, end. That way, I, I'm trying know. to give the, the most longevity uh, out of this. Well, you know, that's for the whole area. Though, the whole that area. way, we don't solve one right, problem, right. create another problem, and then you know. Yeah. Let's see. No, I. We've done this that. in the past. You know, yeah. just. Yeah. All right. Thank you, it. sir. All right. Thank you. And ladies. <coughs> thank Scott. You. Thank you. Tom Kramer has a request. Um, he's got a doctor's appointment. Okay. You could Come on up. He's asking if he can. Uh, Which one is this? This is 46 basket net under parish. Okay. I appreciate you. Of course. No worries. Okay. We're sorry get we you. were delayed with get our Get you on your way. Session. Get you on your way. Thank you very much. Uh, this is a fairly straightforward one. Um, well, my name is Thomas Kramer, principal firm of Kramer Consulting Group. Please sign in there. 54 North Country Road, Miller Place. James, can you blow that up a little? Thank you. <laughs> Just received a notice of non-compliance on January 5th, 2023. Yeah, so um, 
the notice of uh, non-compliance was for a four by sixteen or four by eighteen foot uh, deck four that got redecked without a permit, um, and then the vegetation wasn't planted, which has now been planted, uh, according to the agent. And then what was the other thing? Uh, the 20, uh, 20 foot east timber return, return was not built. Right. right. So they tied it into the bulkhead instead of doing the return. So um, really the only thing for this modification is to uh, allow the decking. That to was legalize the decking. Legalize the decking and right. to is remove the uh, return. The return from the permit. Is it non-treated material that was used? What was used on the decking? Uh, it was uh, uh, vinyl or some treated, yes. Is it through it's flow? Do you, is me? it through flow Probably. that was used? No, on it's it? just regular decking. Timber nice. tech or whatever it is. Timber tech, yeah. Do you have a picture of it? Uh, and do you have a picture of the plantings too that were done? I don't have. Uh, I don't think we. At the time when I submitted, they didn't have the plantings done. Right. You just emailed us and said that it was done. Right. Uh, George did not go out. Uh, to check if the plantings were done because I think he was waiting for the modification to be approved before he. Uh, that was the plantings were required under the original permit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and so the plantings were done in March, I believe, mm -hmm. prior right. to the expiration of the permit. Right. She but thought that once the bulkhead was done, she thought that she was through the project. Right. So it was her mistake. But. We have no. Do, will George go well, back well, out then again? He will. He will okay. back out. To, okay. Yeah. To, so he'll, he'll confirm. That, he'll confirm. Uh, he'll confirm the plantings. Yeah. Okay. So that's what he'll go out for. Okay. Now he put on there, uh, Mr. Kramer. Maybe can um, advise us on it. But he he put on the four by eighteen foot walkway. And uh, you put on your application for the four by sixteen foot. So I was just wondering who the. Uh, I took that off the survey. I think I think George made a typo. Yeah. George More. said four by eighteen. Yeah. Because on the yeah. cover no, it's sheet. It says four by eighteen. Because on the cover sheet it says four by sixteen. What do the plans say? Plans say four by eighteen. Because that matches the uh, uh, sixteen five. 16.5. Yeah. Existing deck. Which was scaled off because the survey didn't have it on it. This one half off here? Is that a couple feet off? So, uh, yeah, I guess if, as long as we can inform, confirm with George that it was 16.5, uh, not. Yeah, the survey didn't have the uh, um, size of the deck on it, and it was scaled off of the. So it's actually smaller than what it's supposed to be. It's oh, yeah, according to yes. We just need to, to confirm that then, right. to see what the actual size enough. is. Yeah. Um, so the planting and the actual size of the. The planting's been done, I'm told. We just need to get the photographs of it. Right. Okay, yeah, just confirmation. Good. So just go to advance. Um, just one request is uh, the application itself has a lot of uh, wording, Excess. explanation of why they did stuff. All, you know, all I think that all we really need is the, 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 si the, the size details. of the deck yeah. that's yeah. exact, which is 16.5, to, you know, to legalize the redecking of this 4 by 16 the removal of the return, whatever size return it was, and that's that's all we really need for the modification. You just note it, and yeah. Uh, so all the rest of it can be taken off that cover sheet, so it's not confusing. Yeah. Yeah. Is that okay, Tom? Yeah, that's okay. fine. So we good to advance. Uh, we good to advance. Okay. Okay. Again, thank you very much. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. Who's up next? Is it you? Yes. You got three ten. Three tennies. Three tennies. Yeah. Talk highway. Juno. Turf and engineering. 
How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Sign on this. Correct. State your name for the record. Sign in. Uh, my name is Gabriel Gombana for Shepherd Engineering. Um, we're doing the as built for 310 East Pontiac Highway. Um, the homeowner was under the impression that the bulkhead it was falling apart, and for repairs or modifications, small modifications, um, we didn't, he didn't need a permit. Uh, he did all the work, and we were retained to go in and just kind of inspect it, make sure it all actually works. Um, he did match the vinyl sheathing of the neighbor, of his neighbor, um, and then all and still kept the 15 foot buffer that was in the original survey or that was previously permitted. Um, originally, this bulkhead was put in um, without a permit. Um, Correct. It came to light during a storm that it got ripped out. Mm -hmm. um, so. I'm um, assuming that you guys engineered a better bulkhead. This is pictures of the bulkhead after the storm. Um, what happened to it? So I'm hoping that it's a better engineered bulkhead this time than it was previously. Well, we got stamped engineered plans, right? Correct. Yes. Right, you, you sign in for the record? Uh, yeah, I was going to understand. Yeah, I was looking at it. Okay, so we have. We have stamped plans by an engineer, so. Yeah, that's Mark Shepard. Right, so this should be. Um, the only and one this question. Had no permit originally? It no, the, the original bulkhead <coughs> was permitted. Okay. They put the, the bulkhead in, in, uh, in front of it without a permit. During the storm of uh, December, it got blown out. Wow. So now they've re redid it again without a permit, and <laughs> they're coming in for an as built permit. My only one question for you is that on the survey that you provided us, it does not deplict the Shinnecock Beach Road, which is a f on this survey. I don't yeah. know if you have another survey, but on all the surveys along this from Crab Road, 300 feet west of Crab Road to Far Pond, all the surveys we've mm -hmm. asked the, <laughs> to have the uh, Shinnecock Beach Road shown on it. Okay. So that would be something that's important. Got it. Yes. So is it a surveyor that we generally? Yes, the survey okay. is depicts the uh, Shinnecock Beach Road, and they've given us a survey here. They've done this. Who's, who did this? I have these folks. Meets and bounds survey, and it, it was had got gotten the original uh, map of the uh, amended map A of the westerly part of Shinnecock Hills. So that should have. All right. So we'll have to send you. Beach. That's. Let's hold this until they provide yeah. the proper survey, yep. the proper yep. rotations on it. Yeah, so it's, it's, a float, it's a float rider. You can it's handle that, right? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah. It's so that's put that on your list. You're gonna you're gonna need to get that because this survey provide the survey to show Shinnecock Bay Road. Sh yeah. Shinnecock Beach Road. Beach Road. On the yep. Depicted appropriately on the survey. Yep. And everything else, the buffer and everything else is in the stone is everything. It, everything is good that we would ask. So I'm gonna hold that until we receive that part of the. Uh, Call the mm -hmm. survey. Survey. Okay. Well, the, and then after well, this. Well, there. See, I, there is another. There is an older sur survey, correct? Yeah, that shows it. But, but we need the one that's going with this project, yeah. though, yeah. right? He, they they, they yeah. need to. They should yeah. have probably. This is yeah. from the latest. Yeah. Well, who did this one? Low. That's a different. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm just showing you that there. There is right. a. But that a one does Reputed uh, road line, and it's right very clearly on this survey. Uh, from another survey. So just have this survey or update that. that. that, that meets and bounds up there. Yeah. Is that local? He probably did not use a local survey, so he had no idea. Yeah, yeah he's a little bit out west, but yes. Yeah. All right, so you, you handle that. Got it. Yep. Get it over to James, and then we'll, we'll take it from there. Because can't. It. Yeah, we can't advance this one until we have that. Okay, okay. and then right. we, we come back for another hearing, correct? Once you have that in, then uh, loses this. Uh, we look at it, make sure we have all the proper and, paperwork, yeah, and then we we'll Trustee the Warner. Work session. Yeah. 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 Trustee yeah. Warner will facilitate. Yep. But get that to James as soon as you can get that from the survey. Okay. okay. Will do. All right. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Sunset Point Enterprises, LLC, 130 Point Meacox Lane, Bridgehampton, First Coastal, Billy. Um, this is for a... 
uh, to um, modify. Oh, do you want to talk about it? Uh, no, I was just introducing Billy Mack, First Coastal. Hey, for you. <laughs> oh, Thanks. this is to, for a change. Um, it's to change a 30 by 4 foot catwalk to a 100 by 4 foot catwalk and to remove an existing timber walk. Um, the catwalk will, will be elevated three and a half feet above grade with treated materials and open grate decking for the catwalk and stair treads. So this um, project was originally approved with an existing timber path, uh, walkway that was on grade. Now coming back for the elevation, but the elevation will go over um, the um, conservation board jurisdiction. So we requested an advisory letter and the May 2nd Environment Division field inspection uh, for the proposed catwalk revealed that both state and town regulated wetlands and adjacent Swan Creek shorelands have been cleared and modified by soil slash loam deposition for the purposes of establishing lawn. The affected areas are encumbered by a covenanted naturally vegetated wetland non-disturbance, non-fertilizing buffer, the entirety of which has been largely destroyed. Accordingly, Sunset Point Enterprises plans um, dated February 15th, last re uh, 2022, last revised January 20th, 2023, are not reflective of current site conditions. And a administrative wetlands permit application has been separately filed with the town on March 17th, 2023, in order to manage um, existing Phragmites. However, the permitting of such activities is not being entertained as the application and plans need to be modified to call for a <coughs> full reclamation of the pre-existing natural terrain and vegetated cover. In light of the above, any permitting of the proposed catwalk and dock should be held in abeyance until the affected shorelands have been fully restored. And you okay. say? Uh, and I say yes, we're in the process of submitting a uh, restoration plan for the property. Um, I believe it's a new property owner wasn't aware or somebody wasn't aware okay. of something. So they're bringing it up to speed uh, okay. with respect to restoring. And then we'll come back and Right. So this. let's hold this until yeah. we, we get to where Obviously it, it all works for everybody that way. Yeah, because yeah, otherwise it's doesn't make sense. It's not going to be right. Yep. Yep. As long as you're on it and you totally okay yep thank you thank you appreciate that thanks mr mac we got thank one more very much oh, oh, one more okay uh do you have another one mr parish yeah one more oh. yeah i do 400 dune road sorry lisa oh, you're next dune road. yep uh, okay this is a pre-existing bulkhead and uh on file Reconstruct in place approximately 144 feet of existing bulkhead. Increase top elevation of the bulkhead to L6.3 feet. In parentheses, NAVD 88. No tree would be used. Place approximately 60 cubic yards of clean sand and pebbles within 10 foot landward of the bulkhead. Yeah. The plan shows the existing elevation at 3.5 feet. And you want to raise it to 6.5. So, um, this, yeah. 36 inches. Of so, just, so just for the record, yeah. um, if you pull up the aerial, um, this is the property that is the bulkheaded portion to the west, excuse me, to the east, How of the living shorelines, it? isn't it, Billy? Or is it? No, no I'm wrong. I'm wrong. It's Sorry. 18 inches. I'm wrong. It's a different so, area. I'm, so, I'm wrong about the location. And what's what did you say about 18 uh, I, inches? I was just confirming with Andrew in my office the requested raise of the bulkhead should note 18 inches, not 
whatever was depicted in the plan <laughs> or the <laughs> description of the plan. We plan, let's make a deal, start yeah. with a gigantic number. Well, it's well, 18 inches, so you can start with three feet. That's yeah, what we no, said yeah. when it came in. Um, no, and there was this whole thing that shows that this, pro this particular property gets flooded quite often. The owner pushed us to do that and... Um, what, 36? Yeah. So we're realizing that that's not very realistic and we're willing to do it. Right, yeah, I mean, team. we're, we're, yeah. What do you want to do, trusty parish? Nine inches. <laughs> this is a property, this is a bulkheaded property that has properties to either side that do not have any bulkheads. There is some revetment, I believe, to the west as well as to the east, Billy. Is right, there, is there revetment um, on the toe of that? On the west so, side, there's a permitted uh, stone revetment. Right, for on several the east properties. side, they have something there. It's noted on a survey as a uh, as a little elevated uh, curve. It looks like it wants to be a bulkhead, but I don't think it is. Yes. What is that? Why is it so bad? Yeah, no, it's only. Yeah, you can see it says, well, no, it's not even shown on this, this particular survey. On the property <coughs> survey to the east, there is a structure there, and I'm not exactly sure what it is. That area is very beachy and doesn't get inundated. This property is um, one of the old properties. In it. Well, you and James get to look at this one. You get to look at this one. No, we haven't been out there. I think that, based on what's going on, yeah, let's you're gonna, to, you're gonna have to get over there. Yeah, this okay. is the one where the guy used to lay in a helicopter on. No, but it looks like he wants to, right? Yeah, right, yeah. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. There's a big sand platform there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you can see on that eastern side. See that edge. Um, so there is something there. I don't know what it is. Right. Could, we, but we need to know. So yeah. I think we, yeah. let's hold this okay. and let's get like a, a time coordinated between trusted yeah, parish, I'm happy to meet you on site. environmental analyst, Mr. Durier, Good. and let's get some better intel before yeah. we move spinning our wheels around. James, okay. draw back a little bit. There's a point to the east here. Yeah. And then a point to the west as well. Yes, and a curve. The bulk, the, all those properties to the west are pretty much bulkheaded the mm. whole way around yeah. on the bay side, but to the east, there's a fair amount of um, sediment yeah. movement, I would imagine. That's um, accreting there. So it's interesting that from, you know, that, uh, this applicant's property here to the east, those properties are actually gaining mm. when they're losing on the other side. So the sand is all shifting to that side of the cove. All right, so you'll so we'll need to go coordinate. Yeah. yeah, good. Hold it. I think that's it. That's it for you, but we still have a Thank you person guys. waiting for yes. patiently for the turn yeah. back. Or at least <laughs> 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 Twin Fork permits with 97, 97 Cobile Road. 97 <laughs> Cobile Road. You're going to sleep great tonight, Lisa. <laughs> Hanging out with us all day. Okay. This is. You should still have hair. This is. Um, it was all the dogs. This is a project with an um, in kind in place replacement of existing bulkhead along Meacox Bay at 97 Cobile Road. So it's 203 linear feet of bulkhead that will be replaced um, with vinyl pile, um, tropical hardwood timber whale, green heart timber piles, all untreated, um, with a buffer that will be na native vegetation that will not be mowed ir or irrigated after the third season. Um, this is right on Meacox Bay. Uh, Lisa, maybe you want to speak a little bit. Lisa Poyer with Twin Forks Permits on behalf of the applicant. Uh, this is a, I think a straightforward application where it's an in-kind, in-place replacement of the existing bulkhead. It's in the middle of about 1,500 linear feet of other bulkheads along that uh, eastern facing Meacox Bay area. It's at the terminus of Cobble yeah, Road. The house is across the street. Oh, they're significant. 
and we're replacing it with vinyl bulkhead with uh, non-treated other wooden materials to help support the bulkhead. At present, there's lawn right up to the edge of the bulkhead. There's so actually this will a, be a narrow strip of beach grass there right now, right. and we're proposing to do a five-foot buffer there. Ten. Ten is what our regulations call for. Go back to the client. So, well, I have enough lawn edge. there. Come on. <laughs> so, 10 feet is what uh, the condition will be? Yes. Clinton. Yeah, they always look yeah. for 10, and if there's some boating users, you know, they can just, right. you know, use, use good judgment there. You, you know. Yep. Do we need a planning plan for this? Or? It'll just well, be beach grass. Cape right. American Beach. Are you going to put on center? One that plugs. Ends, plugs. <laughs> so you'll, you'll amend your cover sheet and your plans depicting as such, or do you need to speak to your? I will speak with the client first, and then I'll get back to so you. So you want us to hold this? Uh, you can move it forward based upon that condition. What do you think, James? Um, I will resubmit plans as. Yeah, plans yeah. showing a ten foot buffer. It would be nice plans. to have some, and we some need nice a cover sheet. We need a cover sheet too. Yeah, matching cover sheet and plans. Says yeah, right. You're gonna need stamp plans too. I, I yeah, do have, have one question about the the proposed buffer zone will be native vegetation which will not be mowed or irrigated after the third season. Does that mean they're mowing before? No, the third season? that's okay. what was. I was it's asked just the to irrigation is the third. Right, season. just to make right. sure it thrives. Oh, well, and gets yeah. oh, I see. It won't be mowed ever. Is that not that's, clear? Uh, that oh, Cape okay. American yeah. Beach yeah. question. It's never mowed. We're going to be yeah. sending yeah. the mowing inspector. Yeah. Right. So it's just the irrigation portion. Yeah. Is okay. you have to irrigate it initially. I was asked but then that. Yeah. Add that into the cover sheet. Yep. I, and I, I appreciate that. But you'll be able that's to provide fine. what's Blue Book compliant by the next meeting, unless yes. your client objects. But you'll advise them there's Blue Book compliance. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. So there we have no latitude. That's fine. So it's it's it's. You know, I have to ask. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so and I we have to, to follow our. We're good here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so the can we plans move? are stamped. So you could use the I new will plans will be stamped as well. It, yes. Okay. Right. So you'll advance it. Cover sheet. Revised cover sheet and revised plans that will be stamped. Correct. Restamped. New plans. I'm fine with that. That's okay with you. Okay. With okay. You guys. Okay. Yeah. It's good. It's good. It's good. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Lisa. Lisa. Thank you. Now sorry you on to the emotional rescue. It's no, it's advanced because they have stamp, but yeah, we'll, we're advanced. We'll so review advanced. before we put it on for that meeting. We'll take a look at it and make sure that it's okay. Yes, yep. it's right. minor, which you can listen. Thank on to you the, guys very much. You're welcome. Thank Thanks you. Thank you, Bill. We're on to the Emotional Rescue LLC, 14 Neomog Lane, Village of Quag, for uh, stamp plant determination. Do we have it, Mr. Uh, Durier? One second. Let me just pull it up and confirm. Mark, you're awfully quiet down there. <laughs> we do have a stamp. I didn't hear him come back in. We good? We good. Yep. Stamp plans. Okay, so advance that. All right. We already discussed Beretta. Yep. You got Rogalin. Ten Land, Sen Lane, Takaho. Good? Yep. Trustee Pell, you good? I'm good. Okay. Brian O'Donohue, 17 Cormorant Drive, Hampton Bays. It's a Trustee Warner. You got him? Stamped. Good. All matching, James? Yes. Okay. <coughs> good to advance. You got uh, 53 Four Pond, Theodore Clisis. Clisis. That was in my box today, so I think we should have it. Yep. You good? Yes. Thank you, James. Then you've got Trusty Parish has Christopher Jones, 916 Flanders Road. Represented by Jeff Patanjo.
It moved to advance it. Okay. So that'll advance. Now, uh, maybe I missed it, but the inner science one, are you guys holding it because he left, or? Which inner three, science? 373 Millstone Brook. Yeah, we're going to hold that one. You're going to hold that one? Yeah, yeah. that's on hold. Do it right, next week. Two weeks. Now, we had uh, exec session already. Does anybody have a need for further your further discussion? Okay. So, at this point in time, you okay, James? Yes. I will I, make a motion. I have to do one real quick thing. Um, the owner at uh, adjoining Crab Road on the western side, the Walshers, have asked to cut down one of the trees that are there. I was there last week looking at it. It's three quarters rotten. It had been trimmed because it had some electrical wires, so they were looking for permission from us to allow our, our contractor to come down and take the tree down. I, it needs to be done because it's all, it's all wrapped in the electrical wires. It's a maple tree, and if it grows back like it had previously, it will like rip her down. It's in, it's in bad shape? It's in real bad shape. It's half, I mean, it's rotten. It's going to yeah, fall I apart. Have no I, I have no trouble. Mark? Long to have my you know that, Mark? Yeah, they're just looking to go across the trustee's easement, is that? Yeah, they're gonna, they're, they, they get access to the house off of Crab Road. There's two houses, and it's on the house on the west side, and it's right next to the fence and in the electrical wires. Yeah, you could do a letter of permission and a hold harmless if you wish. Um, that's up to the trustee's discretion. You think it rises to that level? No, yeah. I, I would just give them a say to go cut it, get a get an insured tree person. Get us the name of the person and make sure that we are secondarily insured or whatever. Yeah. On that. That's up to the trustees. Okay. As long as they have the buy both insurance. As long as they have insurance. Okay. I want you to Okay. I will take care of it. What else do you folks have before we go into? You need exec session, correct? More exec session, Ann? Yes, please. Okay. All right. So I'd like to thank everybody for their participation today. It's been a. Uh, but, uh, before you close, when you or when you go into the next exec session, just your. The, the purpose of the next exec session sure. you want to state. Is this, so is this a litigation or personnel issue, man? Okay. Contract. Uh, oh, contract. Yes. Legal advice, contracts. Yes. yes. Okay, so make the motion for what it is and. Um, it's for contract. Uh, let's go into executive session, please, okay, for so purposes of okay. contract. Okay, so well. Second. Motion to adjourn this meeting. Is there anybody on Zoom that's. Uh, no. There is no zoom. No zoom. That's right. Work session. Okay. So, motion to adjourn the meeting. Go into uh, executive session for uh, purposes of uh, legal contract discussions. Yeah. Here, second. <coughs> second. Second. And trustee one are all in favor. All right. All right. All right. All right.